uh, help to identify and validate the predictive parameter. Parameters are important in, uh, in predictive uh, in, in, in the prediction of uh, cardiovascular disease, that's because um, this parameter can help to uh, to uh, to predict earlier uh, a disease like cardiovascular disease, like uh, cancer, like uh, diabetes. And if we have stand, if if you have identified the parameter, we can the parameter we can draw inspiration from this work, the work presented in the first uh, etap, first step. We can uh, inspire from this work to design a method a methodological framework for the production of more efficient predictive models. Okay. And the objective of this study is uh, to make a step knowledge on the approaches which have been proposed to predict and diagnose cardiovascular disease. So uh, we're doing that, identifying all the parameters that predict, that predict cardiovascular disease. And also we, we have to discuss the choice of, of parameters. Uh -huh. mm. We have uh, in the literature review, we have uh, uh, in the literature review, uh, NG Wandra and CPG did summarize and assess the state of knowledge of data mining technique in the prediction and diagnostic of non communicable disease. So yeah. they present uh, different, they present. Assessed. Howell and D Deep Srivata and Tripathi carried out a comparative analysis of different soft computing techniques to predict her disease according to the risk, uh, risk factor for disease occurrence. This analysis was made in the basis of publication between 1980 uh, uh, and uh, 2090. In this comparative analysis, they did not hide the use of attribute, which is important parameter in predictive and analysis. Uh, Shan Mugas Daram and Mala Seivan uh, investigate the different factors and their importance in the, in the identification of uh, her disease. They found that the research did not take into account many predictive attributes and important factors such as alcohol and smoking could not could have been included. They include that they conclude that reducing the com the number of attributes to increase accuracy does not accurately predict cardiovascular disease. So this statement made I um, I think that this statement this statement may not be verified in in the case where the reduced attribute relevance of the attribute shows a not their number. We can reduce an uh, an attribute who 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 have who is not important. If you reduce an attribute who is not important, uh, they have not an impact. Mm -hmm. So I choose. Existing in existing approaches in the in the research in this um, work, I present um, 90 to 60 approaches 
in the documents. Then that's, there, there are very recent work that have been published in the prediction and diagnostic of cardiovascular disease. D'accord. Then we have to reference this uh, this uh, part in the uh, in the paper. D'accord. There's uh, 26 approach are presented in the in the paper. We, you can uh, you can. Uh, Comparative comparison of approaches. So we can present now the result. The result uh, obtained in this uh, in this work. So uh, we have we have do a comparison of uh, many approaches. For it, uh, for each approach, we present the objective, the data source used, the algorithm and parameter used, and the result. And the result obtained. Parameter used and main disk factor. Now, in the medical literature, four main disk factor have been identified, like use of tobacco, uh, use abusive of alcohol, physical inactivity, and poor jet. There's four main, uh, the four main uh, risk factor have we identified in the literature medical. So several other uh, paramet parameters have been identified in these different approaches presented in the paper, like age, sex, weight, uh, height, cholesterol level, and other parameters. Um, we can, uh, we have. Uh, uh, we have identified a total of we have identified 26 parameters used in these these approaches. Algorithm used. So there is that is a list of uh, algorithm used in these approaches, like artificial neural network, uh, SVM. Super vector machine, super SVM optimized with RBM kernel and bit which LSTM, uh, decision tree, naive weight, random forest, KNN, average, average mega book, hybrid random forest with linear models, particles from um, convolution neural network, extreme learning machine. So in this list of uh, algorithms, um, the algo the, the for <coughs> um, the uh, artificial neural network super vector machine and SVM optimized with uh, RBF LSTM decision team and knife by uh, obtained. Um, uh, obtain result, obtain main result to uh, in the offer the best precision. That algorithm offer the best precision. D'accord. Now, but the result was obtained using different different attributes or parameters. D'accord. Um, so we can uh, we can we can to do a comparison uh, for these attributes because they they have they was not used the uh, same same attribute to uh, to do the the prediction. They obtained the, the good result, but we can uh, we can um, we can compare compare them there their models using this algorithm because they they uh, haven't used it same 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 attribute we can know that two approaches in the in the approaches presented two approaches using different parameters may obtain very good results like um, um, Mamata and Shaisi used 
20 attribute for an accuracy of uh, 92 and uh, Tulai and Oscan obtain accuracy of 95 uh, using only 20 only uh, 40 attribute their result were posing using the same we cannot that there is a result um, produce using the same the same algorithm like artificial neural network uh -huh. most of these attributes present have used the uci cleveland repository to predict cardiovascular diseases uh, with a level of prediction of precision ranging from um, 80 to uh, 90 uh, 95 percent um, you say repos in the UCA repository, we have identified uh, 70 attributes and only four, 40 used to predict cardiovascular disease. Okay. Only 40 use it to, uh, to predict cardiovascular disease. So, in the other attribute of this repository, Others attribute of this repository, such as smoker or use of cigarette, are not included among the among the 40 days 40 variable. There is a problem because uh, there is a problem because uh, uh, smoking is um, <coughs> smoking is um. Uh, is an attribute important who help to uh, predict cardiovascular disease. Sin use um, attribute like smoker and cigarette. So the discussion here we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, um, we can <clears throat> um, I, I think that parameter I think that um, to have an to propose a model uh, efficient to a uh, predictive analysis we can we can we have to we have to uh, include any parameter affecting her design into uh, the parameter to predict uh, this disease okay. according uh, according to uh, who Study published in Main uh, in Main uh, in May 20, uh, 2070. Smoking is responsible for more than seven million deaths a year worldwide. So it should be necessary uh, among the predictive the predictor variable. A study is conducted on the different approaches proposed to predict cardiovascular disease. Their objective, the data source, the parameter used, and the resultant of uh, each approach were presented. We list. We, we have to list. Uh, we have uh, not, we have presented um, twenty six approaches, and uh, twenty six parameters are identified. In the future work, in future work, we will carry out an in-depth study on this attribute in order to obtain a complete set of relevant attributes clearly defined to predict cardiovascular diseases, and then look for possibility relationship between uh, between that these approaches. So um, thank you for
for your attention during my presentation. Thank you, thank you, Fatou, for your presentation. Uh, can you, Dakar, see Fizazi? Thank you, thank you very much for your uh, good presentation. Donc, I'd like to thank you for the all information that you support this uh, conference. Uh, but I still have some question. You are, your study is trying to predict and diagnostic a non communicable diseases. So, Really, it's a big difference between uh, non-communicable diseases and communicable diseases in this case. Because you are presenting some, some parameters and uh, risk factors, uh, we're talking about some uh, methods that we know in deep learning or machine learning. Uh, where is the difference and what's the relation between uh, no communicable diseases and machine learning, please. You heard me? Um, no. Do you need that, that I repeat my, my question? Yeah, yes. You can repeat, please. I would like to know, I would like to know what is the difference because mm -hmm. we are talking about some techniques that we know in deep learning mm -hmm. and machine learning. And mm -hmm. you are trying to use in, in predicting and diagno diagno diagnosing mm -hmm. non communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. I think there is no difference if you use it in diagnosis non differentiable diseases or others. Can you explain me the difference using these techniques in diagnosing non communicable diseases and communicable diseases? Mm. Uh, question. I am. Um, can I uh, can I speak in French? Answers in French or not? I don't know if there is another person who talk uh, who can understand you on the in French. Uh, okay. I, th I think you can you, you can uh, speak in French. Okay. 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 Give more detail. Okay. Mm. Pour les maladies, les maladies non trans, les maladies transmissibles. On sait que pour les maladies transmissibles, non transmissibles, nous pouvons. Il y a des paramètres. Euh, ils sont dus à des des euh, des facteurs comme comme je l'ai dit tantôt. Ce sont ils sont dus à des facteurs environnement, à l'environnement, au comportement et euh, À, à des gènes, alors que pour les maladies, les maladies trans transmissibles, pour les maladies transmissibles, ils sont, euh, ils sont dus, euh, ils sont, les, les maladies transmissibles peuvent être, peuvent être, euh, peuvent, peuvent être, euh, euh, Transmise d'une personne à l'autre, comme Covid, par Peuvent exemple. Être, voilà. C'est ça. Peuvent être ma question, mm -hmm. Oui, mais ma question, mm -hmm. les méthodes que vous êtes en train d'illustrer de, euh, de ou bien de, de parler, ils ne oh. font pas la différence entre les paramètres qu'on leur donne dans le machine learning. Il y a une grande différence, soit mm -hmm. qu'ils soient d'une maladie transmissible ou non transmissible. Parce que oui. euh, l'étape la plus importante, c'est de déterminer les paramètres, c'est-à-dire identifier et valider les paramètres. Oui. Mais oui. après, pour le machine learning, pour les méthodes de machine learning, il n'y a pas de différence. Il n'y a pas, il y a pas de seule différence. Oui, Parce ce sont ce que dit qui... mm -hmm. mm -hmm. C'est bon Je vous écoute, oui. oui. Donc, euh, oui. une autre question Oui. J'aimerais bien de préciser comment vous avez implémenté, par exemple, un de ces méthodes de machine learning sur, pour essayer donc de, de faire. Et c'était tout simplement une jumelle sur les méthodes existantes sur le marché. 
Bon, là, il s'agissait juste une phase, c'est, c'est juste une phase d'exploration, de, d'étude c'est sur bon. les approches, de, de, voilà, de voir les résultats obtenus et de faire quelques comparaisons pour nous permettre après nous de, d'implémenter ou de tester les modèles en utilisant des paramètres, euh, les paramètres, des ces paramètres. Merci, merci pour votre présentation. Je passe la parole à M. Abdouak. Merci. D'accord, merci, c'est tout à fait. Merci Fatou pour la, la présentation, pour euh, d'avoir partagé avec nous votre travail. Une première question pour essayer de bien se situer dans votre travail. Est-ce que, est-ce que vous travaillez dans le, dans le domaine médical euh, Non, pas exactement. Je ne travaille pas dans le domaine médical. D'accord. Mais il est prévu de travailler avec des acteurs de la santé pour nous permettre de valider ces données-là, surtout les paramètres. D'accord. Donc, juste parce que dans la présentation, il y a beaucoup, il y a un manque de, c'est-à-dire, il y a un manque d'informations, premièrement sur la base de données utilisée, dataset. Donc, il n'y a pas d'informations sur, sur quoi vous avez travaillé. D'accord. Deuxièmement, il y a un mélange de, de, d'études, de, de, d'applications, des algorithmes de machine learning et plus ou moins l'ELM. Euh, qui ont mm-hmm. D'accord. Euh, j'ai, j'ai compté, j'ai compté 16, 16 algorithmes pour vous tester. Alors que logiquement, euh, il faut vraiment se concentrer sur euh, un à quatre, c'est pas un, un, deux à quatre algorithmes, vu qu'il faut identifier en avance la nature des données. C'est-à-dire que le, les algorithmes diffèrent de leur implémentation, de leur façon de, de faire les choses, de, de classifier, ainsi de suite. Et au préalable, il faut être capable de dire voilà, c'est-à-dire de catégoriser les algorithmes, plus ou moins, avant de rentrer dans les, 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 les applications. D'accord Deuxième chose, c'est que j'ai remarqué dans un slide que vous, vous faites la comparaison entre la précision et le nombre de caractéristiques de features. D'accord. C'est noté que euh, un algorithme a obtenu un bon résultat de une bonne précision alors qu'il utilisait moins de caractéristiques. Donc là, dans la, dans la, la, la science des données, dans les algorithmes appliqués, mm-hmm. il y a il y a des étapes à respecter, comme a dit mm-hmm. le professeur Zazi. C'est que mm-hmm. premièrement, si on, on, on a deux choix en général, d'accord. On a ouais, il y a troisième choix, c'est que soit on va essayer d'identifier les caractéristiques les plus intéressantes. Sinon, on passe vers une architecture euh, réseau, euh, architecture de deep learning, apprentissage profond, et on le laisse de gérer ou bien de choisir le, avec euh, le, la grandeur de la profondeur. D'accord Et ça dépend là de, de, de la, la, c'est-à-dire la, la, le nombre de données dans votre base de données. D'accord Si on est dans... Euh, une base de données qui est énorme, ce n'est pas la peine de perdre du temps avec le, l'apprentissage automatique et de passer mm-hmm. vers l'apprentissage profond. Contrairement, si on a euh, une base de données qui est très réduite, donc mm-hmm. euh, il faut obligatoirement euh, travailler avec l'apprentissage automatique. Le, le deep learning ne va rien mm-hmm. donner. D'accord Donc, une Merci. fois, on va identifier la nature de la base, on va identifier les caractéristiques, on peut passer vers ce qu'on appelle l'ingénierie des caractéristiques. Et là, on doit, c'est-à-dire votre comparaison, euh, la, la, ça serait mieux de, de faire un, une ingénierie de caractéristiques pour voir quelles, quelles caractéristiques sont les mieux ou bien les, per, les plus pertinentes. D'accord, d'accord. C'est-à-dire de commencer par 300 caractéristiques et à la fin, on va se retrouver avec 4, 5 caractéristiques qui nous permettent de remplacer le tout. C'est-à-dire, il faut vraiment s'approfondir dans cet aspect pour pouvoir, euh, c'est-à-dire donner un travail, c'est-à-dire de faire des implémentations permettant une très bonne euh, précision. D'accord. C'est un D'accord. domaine très intéressant, donc ça va aider énormément de, de, des gens de pouvoir identifier les, les causes, les causes de, de la maladie et, euh, c'est-à-dire prédire. Mm-hmm. Prédire, ça ne sert à rien. Prédire, ça, c'est, c'est l'objectif, c'est de, c'est-à-dire demander à la personne de cesser de faire ce qu'il est en train de faire. C'est-à-dire, si on, mm-hmm. la, donner des conseils. C'est ça, c'est donner des, des conseils. conseils 
pour éviter le, 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 le pire. La malade. D'accord, mais en général, c'est-à-dire la, la thématique elle est très très intéressante. Ce qu'il faut faire, c'est de mieux s'approfondir ou de s'approfondir encore sur la partie euh, data, data set, features et algorithms, c'est-à-dire est-ce qu'on va vers le, la, le machine learning ou bien le deep learning. Exactement. D'accord. Merci. Euh, D'accord. Merci à vous. C'est Fazazi. Euh, est-ce qu'il y a des, des, des questions? Sinon, je peux, je peux rebondir sur ce que vous venez de dire tout de suite. Oui. Bon, euh, juste juste avant, des... avant de vous donner la parole, pour les, mm -hmm. les participants, s'ils veulent, veulent poser leurs questions, donc il y a ce qu'en bas, il y a un, une icône qui a réaction. Mm -hmm. D'accord Pour éviter, c'est-à-dire que plusieurs participants parlent à la fois. Donc, c'est-à-dire, on va lever la main et on, donne, on va donner la parole à fur et à mesure. D'accord. D'accord, à vous la parole. Voilà, donc c'était juste pour dire que ce que vous dites, c'est des éléments qui vont réellement nécessairement suivre cette étude. Donc là, c'était carrément une phase explorative. Ça nous permettait d'explorer ce qui se fait un peu partout dans la prédiction des maladies, mentales, des maladies cardiovasculaires. Comment ça se fait Quels sont les algorithmes qui sont utilisés et quels sont les paramètres qui sont utilisés. Normalement, il n'y avait pas lieu peut-être de dire que c'était une, une comparaison qu'on fait, mais c'est des constats. Donc, le constat, c'est que, comme l'exemple de, de l'utilisation de plus ou moins de paramètres, donc ça, c'est un constat. Mais là, rien ne me dit, rien ne me dit exactement si euh, il est préférable d'utiliser 20 paramètres ou 14 paramètres pour obtenir les meilleurs résultats. Donc là, c'est juste des constats. On explore, on trouve des choses et on les note quelque part. On explore et ainsi de suite. Et maintenant, dans les futurs travaux, nous allons essayer de voir, de valider les, ces travaux-là, de voir qu'est-ce qu'il y a de faire, qu'est-ce qu'il y, qu qu y a lieu de faire, est-ce qu'il y a des paramètres à modifier, est-ce qu'il y a des paramètres qui dépendent d'autres paramètres. Donc tout ça, normalement, c'est prévu dans, dans les futurs travaux. Voilà, merci. Donc merci à vous. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions Parmi les participants. Oui, oui. Bonjour. 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 Présentez-vous, euh, parce qu'on est en virtuel. Oui, donc, exactement, euh, merci. Okay. merci. Donc, je vous présente euh, Monsieur Mlehi Mustafa, euh, professeur. Je euh, avec le professeur Mustafa Mlehi. C'est ça. C'est Donc, euh, merci pour euh, la présentation. Je crois que c'est un sujet très intéressant. Donc, euh, mm -hmm. Monsieur Sobra, il a bien sûr posé, bien sûr, donné beaucoup de clés, euh, des conseils, etc. Mm -hmm. euh, donc, euh, pour moi, j'aurais bien aimé, vous avez parlé bien sûr d'un problème de cardiovasculaire. Donc, pour parler bien sûr de 90 attribués. Donc, euh, et vous, vous utilisez en ligne juste 14, 14 prédicts. Donc, je vois une idée, quelle est la taille de cette base de données Donc, première question, quelle est la taille de, de cette base de données Quel est et encore euh, le choix Comment vous avez choisi euh, les attributs Ça, c'est... Deuxièmement, euh, vous avez parlé bien sûr de plusieurs modèles, etc., à savoir le ANN, etc. etc. Est-ce que vous avez développé euh, vos, propres, vos, alg vos propres algorithmes ou bien vos propres modèles, ou bien vous avez déjà utilisé les, le modèle qui est déjà prédéfini dans, euh, dans, dans le Twitter Si vous avez, si vous avez euh, euh, comment dire, euh, si vous avez développé, comment choisir, euh, par exemple, les fonctions, les fonctions de poids, les fonctions d'activation, est-ce que vous avez une idée sur ça Et Merci. Voilà, merci beaucoup pour la question. Tu peux répondre Oui, 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 bien sûr. Voilà, donc euh, je reviens à la question. Je pense que c'est des éléments présentés comme ça. Ça a l'air de... On a l'impression que c'est des travaux que j'ai effectués moi-même. Mais là, j'ai essayé de présenter les travaux qui ont... Je ne sais pas si je pouvais, vous pouvez faire référence à l'article, mais dans cet article-là, j'ai présenté plus de 26 approches 
Donc, pour chaque approche, j'ai essayé de, 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 de faire ressortir l'objectif de l'approche, euh, la source de données qui a été utilisée par cette approche, euh, les, données, euh, les paramètres qui ont été utilisés et les résultats obtenus par chaque approche. Donc, ce sont ces résultats-là que j'ai essayé de résumer dans la présentation en montrant un peu les paramètres qui ont été utilisés dans ces approches-là. Donc, jusque-là, aucune implémentation n'a été faite. D'accord? Donc, c'est la phase explorative. Parce que nous, pour nous permettre de faire une quelconque implémentation, il faut qu'on puisse euh, s'informer de ce qui se fait actuellement, ce qui existe actuellement, comment les gens s'y prennent. Est-ce qu'ils utilisent telle ou telle variable? S'ils font ça, s'ils utilisent telle variable et tel algorithme, quel est le résultat de ce produit? Nous, on a besoin de voir ça, de le, de le comprendre avant de faire une implémentation euh, dans le sens de la prédiction de, des maladies vasculaire. J'ai tantôt présenté des algorithmes, j'ai tantôt aussi présenté des paramètres. Donc, la remarque par rapport aux paramètres, il y a un référentiel euh, nommé UCI, c'est un référentiel qui est disponible en ligne, et dans ce référentiel, j'ai constaté, j'ai vu que dans pas mal d'approches, euh, ce référentiel est utilisé pour prédire, les données de ce référentiel sont utilisées. Maintenant, j'ai vu que, je suis allée voir ce dans ce référentiel, j'ai vu qu'il y a 70 paramètres qui sont disponibles dans ce référentiel. Parmi les 70, donc, euh, pour prédire les maladies cardiovasculaires, dans la plupart des approches, seuls 14 attributs sont utilisés. Donc, il y a 70 et 14 sont utilisés. Et parmi le reste, j'ai vu qu'il y a deux attributs tels que le fait de fumer ou bien le fait de, de consommer de l'alcool, qui sont des attributs présents dans ce référentiel et qui ne figurent pas parmi les 14. Et là, je me suis posé une question. Pourquoi ces attributs ne sont pas inclus, vu que lorsqu'on a cité les principaux facteurs de risque de ces maladies, il y avait l'utilisation du tabac, l'utilisation abusive de l'alcool. Donc, quelque part, est-ce qu'il est qu y a un paramètre ou bien une variable qui nous permettrait de quantifier ou bien de représenter ces données-là? Donc, il y a pas mal de questions qui, peuvent, qui se sont soulevées durant ces, ces études. Ces études. D'accord? Donc, euh, je suis à un stade d'exploration, pas d'implémentation du tout. D'exploration. D'accord, merci, merci Fatou. C'est clair, c'est clair. Maintenant, c'est clair. C'est euh, oui. un état de l'art pour se voilà, situer dans, le, -à -dire dans les travaux qui sont effectués. Voilà. Mais ça vrai. manque dans la présentation de, de préciser. Peut-être qu'on a loupé quelque chose, mais euh, on a l'impression bon, que vous avez euh, essayé. De... Peut-être que c'est mon. La, la langue là qui n'est pas qui ne peut-être maîtrise pas trop d'accord mais c'est son problème c'est clair c'est clair maintenant c'est voilà, clair voilà. donc euh, voilà. s'il n'y a pas de questions si Khalid on passe à la présentation oui. suivante oui oui bien sûr c'est vrai donc merci Fatou voilà merci euh, beaucoup euh, essayez d'arrêter votre partage voilà je le fais tout de suite c'est bon donc euh, si Khalid oui 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 c'est vrai oui, Kazmak, la liste. Voilà, j'ai arrêté. C'est bon. Donc, on passe Donc, à Yusuf oui. Filaliek. Deuxième présentation, Bonjour. oui. Bonjour. Anna, je vais arrêter le partage. Tu le... Vous lancez le partage en parallèle, c'est bon Ça marche C'est bon. C'est bon. Donc, le partage est bien visuel. Donc, bon toujours. C'est bon, c'est très bien. Donc, 10 à 15 oui. minutes. D'accord. En anglais. Please. Okay. Hello, welcome to my presentation. My name is uh, Philel Youssef, and I will present skin cancer diag diagnosis using an improved protein ensemble machine learning models. So we will begin by a brief introduction. Then we will see the proposed approach, uh, flowed by experimentation, and finally conclusion and perspective. So as we all know, the human body is, uh, is mainly covered by skin. This later tend to protect the body from ex the external factor that can harm the body. Most skin cancers occur on some exposed area of the skin, and there is a lot of scientific evidence to support the ultraviolet radiation as a causative factor in the most type of skin cancer. As we can see in this picture, on the, right, uh, on the left, we have a malignant melanoma, and on the right, we have a non-malignant melanoma. So the melanoma skin cancer is a malignant tumor that brings about a huge number of deaths. Uh, 
and an earlier diagnosis of skin cancer will increase the percentage of current patients. So to help dermatologists in this, a computer yeah, added. So, uh, to help dermatologists in this, a computer-aided diagnostic system has been made for an early evaluation of skin cancer. So, image processing, uh, image, uh, image computer-aided diagnostic. Youssef, tu as tu active votre micro parce que j'ai désactivé l'ensemble. Uh, Youssef, on ne vous entend pas Oui. C'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon. C'est bon. Je okay. recommence d'ici C'est bon, oui. Okay. Donc, uh, the melanoma skin cancer is a malignant tumor that brings about a huge number of deaths. And an earlier diagnosis of skin cancer will increase the percentage of current patients. So, to help dermatologists in this, a computer-aided diagnosis system has been used, uh, used for an early evaluation for skin cancer. So this system are realized in four steps. The first one is pre-processing, then segmentation. Uh, after that, we have a feature extraction and sometimes we have a selection. And finally, the classification. So our goals in, uh, in this paper, so to, to combine a lot of uh, classifier to improve uh, the prediction of uh, our skin cancer rate. So we will, uh, we will we propose an ensemble voting method to classify skin cancer, because as we know, some classifier can predict the output and others will fall. So in our proposed approach, uh, when dermato uh, the first one is the pre-processing and uh, when the dermatologists take the pictures, uh, sometimes you have a lot of artifacts like contrast hair, blood vessel, and skin lines. So we should remove it. And there is a lot of uh, uh, methods. And one of the most practical operation is the decomposition of the images. So much progress have been made for, for image uh, and uh, vision problem using the partial differential equation. So the, the objective of the, the PDU is to divide the images into two campments. One will contain the, the geometric information and second one will contain texture and some noise. Uh, we focused on the OJUL model that, uh, that solved the problem of Maya. It is very famous, the, 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 the OJUL model. So the next, the next step is the segmentation and to have a good uh, rate in classification, we, have, uh, we should have a good segmentation and we should isolate the, the, the healthy skin from the legend. And there are a lot of uh, segmentation methodology. And in our approach, we, we, fo we focused on the, the OTSU algorithm. So here we have a features engineering and it's contained two parts, a features extraction and a feature selection. And we will characterize the lesion as the dermatologist use in their diagnosis using the ABCD rules. So we will extract color, shape, skeleton, and the textural features. So for the color features, we will extract maximum, minimum, mean, and variance from each RGB plane. For the shape, we will extract area, greatest, smaller diameters, perimeter, eccentricity, and the accent. And uh, from our previous work, we, not, we noticed that uh, the skeletonization can give a better representation of uh, the, the cancer. So we will extract nine features from uh, the branch and the endpoint that uh, the, skeleton, the skeleton contain. And uh, for the last one is the textural features. I will, and we will uh, extract contrast, correlation, energy, homogeneity entropy, EDM, smoothness, standard derivation, RMS, and cortosis. The, the next step is the selection. Uh, after extracting all the features, not all of them are relevant, so we should uh, select only the best one. So first of all, we will uh, normalize all the features using the Z-score transformation, and we will uh, select the features using the InfoGain algorithm. The last one is the classification, and we will compare uh, three 
uh, machine learning model that are multilayer perceptron, canaries neighbor, and support vector machine. And then we will improve more our classification using a uh, vote technique. So here we have um, we have uh, an example of the images. The, the image, the, all the data set is, uh, is contained on the PH2 data set. We have uh, here an example of uh, non melanoma masking cancer. We use the PDU decomposition. We have the objects and the texture campment, and we will segment only the, the objects. Here we have all the, the images that we will extract features. Then we will select only the best one, and then we, we classify using the different classifier and the vote technique. For the evaluation of our proposed approach, we will use sensitivity and specificity and the accuracy. The, the given table presents the results of our proposed approach, uh, where we use classifier like multilayer perceptron, super vector machine, and uh, the KNN. And it's clear that the use of the selection method combined with the use classifier gives a satisfying result. And when we use the, the voting technique, um, it enhances more the classification performance, uh, as we can see in this picture. And when we use the, the weighting vote, we can have a 95% accuracy rate. Uh, in addition to prove more our uh, classification rates, we compare uh, from uh, the literature and we can see that uh, our accuracy is better than, uh, than the others like uh, the Barata and Libby. As a conclusion, to help dermatologists in their diagnosis, many solutions in image processing and analysis have been proposed. The use of many features like uh, skeleton shape, texture and color features will improve more to accuracy. And uh, the weighting vote of different classifier uh, like super vector machine and multi-layer perceptron and canaris neighbor got a higher score. In future work, we'll try to implement uh, the proposed approach in embedded system like the FPGL system. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Filadi. Khalid, Are you here? Thank you very much for your presentation. I would like to to pose some question about your work. I think it's uh, your uh, your work is clear and uh, uh, presents uh, the the classical uh, approach: pre-processing, segmentation, feature abstraction. And classification. My question hold about uh, uh, SDM, so like, uh, data sets that you use yeah. to yes, data set that you use to to compare or to benchmark the SVM again in AMLP. Can you explain me uh, the, this uh, this uh, this process and how you do that? You want to know about the the data set? Uh, okay, more, the, more, the, more, more. the the data set contain two two hundred uh, images from the the PH two uh, data set that are online uh, on the website. It's contain uh, one hundred thirty uh, non melanoma and uh, uh, seventy melanoma, and uh, we compare the results on the same data set in the the state of art. Uh, like in the state of art. Okay, thank uh, your your work. Uh, did, did you thank, uh, have you compare your work with other the work? Uh, yes. Yes. And yes. I see that uh, it's uh, a big thank. Uh, that's give uh, a very uh, visual performance. I would yes. like to that really the, the did the this performance. Is it, uh, is, depend on features or on algorithms? On both. Uh, we can see uh, in this, uh, uh, the first table, like when we compare like only one classifier, MLP, SVM, KNN, uh, we can see when we use all the fission, uh, all the features, uh, we have like uh, 90, uh, 80%. But when we use that, the selection, we have like a higher score. But when we use the, and the, the voting technique, we, get, we got a, a higher score, like 95%. So 
So this is due to, to both the, all the features that we extract, the selection and the, the voting technique. And that's uh, it's clear. Okay, I wish you good luck and uh, I pass my uh, said right. Thank you very much. D'accord. Uh, thank you, Professor Fazazi. Uh, well, avant, avant de commencer, là, donc, euh, je ne vais pas euh, poser des, des questions à Sifil Ali parce qu'on travaille ensemble. Donc, je vais laisser le, la parole aux participants. Donc, il y a professeur Nfawil Habib. Donc, euh, professeur, si vous avez des questions. Ok, salam alaikum. Salam so uh, hello, I'm very glad to be here uh, with you and I thank the uh, uh, session chairs, Professor uh, uh, Fezazi Khalid and Professor uh, Sabri Abdul uh, So also I would like to thank uh, uh, PhD student uh, Youssef Fileli uh, so for this uh, uh, nice presentation for this uh, important and interesting uh, uh, field and proposal. So uh, I have some uh, uh, technical uh, questions and other general question about this work. Uh, so I, I would like to start with the uh, slide 25, if you can. So, uh, show the slide 25. Yeah, 25. Okay. Uh, so, here, uh, as you know, so in any uh, machine learning project like this one, so the uh, data set is very important and uh, represents an, an important so, thing in this type of project. So here, uh, uh, can you uh, uh, show or give more details about the uh, train set, the dev set, and did you use a test set? Because here, uh, uh, when we say, for example, uh, uh, this table, so your proposed approach, so, uh, works very better or better than uh, da, than other uh, baseline approach so it is okay it is important uh, but uh, what is so what uh, 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 so you th this accuracy corresponds to the training set or to the uh, uh, dev set so this is a first question about the about the data set Yes. used for in this in this uh, in this paper uh, here we use uh, cross validation five cross validation the, re the result is uh, for five cross validation uh, uh, okay cross validation mm -hmm. yes cross five cross validation and we got this score okay okay uh, so uh, the uh, also i would like to to know the numbers of samples, okay, or the size of your uh, data set? Uh, 200. 200 uh, samples, okay. Yes. So I think that it is uh, a small yeah. one, yes. Yeah, if it we is have... a small one. So small one uh, for the multi layer perceptron, but not for uh, SVM or KNN. So, uh, so this type of uh, learning uh, algorithm can work also better on small data set. But for multi-layer perceptron, I think that you have to choose at, uh, at least, so for me, at least, for example, the standard number, so 2,000 uh, samples, for example, it, is, it will be okay. Mm -hmm. So another uh, 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 question, yeah, about also, uh, you miss, I think that you missed here to give other details about the uh, hyper parameters about the environment and about for example if we take just the multi-layer perception so i would like to know how many hidden units how many neurons do you use in your architecture okay yes, I, uh, I, cho I, yeah. cannot, I choose only two hidden, uh, hidden layers for the the mlp 
for the, the SVM, we choose a quadratic uh, quadratic kernel, and uh, for the KNN, we choose only a simple like uh, five uh, five for for k uh, equal to five, like only a simple way, uh, a simple KNN. Okay, so so I think that you you so you. you so it is more important to add best hyperparameters. So it is very, very important in order to, 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 to show the uh, accuracy of, 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 uh, for your paper. Uh, so for example, here, I would like to say, to, to know, for example, how many neurons in each layer. So you use two layers, okay, how many neurons in each layer? So how many, for, what activations function did you use in your uh, neuron, uh, so ReLU uh, or uh, uh, leaky ReLU or uh, I think uh, uh, sigmoid or TANH or other 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 functions. So it is very very important for machine learning project to give all these hyperparameters. What, for example, what optimizer did you use? Adams uh, uh, or uh, just stochastic gradient descent? Or okay, so this information is very important on each machine learning project. So another uh, question uh, is about uh, the uh, uh, future engineering. So, so uh, uh, as you know, uh, so here you, you have used or used some uh, future engineering techniques about uh, optimization or segmentation, about uh, so uh, textural uh, features and so on. And at the uh, at the last stage, so you said that you. Uh, that you you chosen just some uh, uh, some interesting or some uh, uh, features yeah among all these uh, features in general. So uh, uh, I would like to know uh, how did you uh, uh, choose? How did you uh, uh, so? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I chose only five uh, five uh, features because uh, we use the infogain. Um, uh, Algorithm and he 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 used the the correct the, the information the theory information criteria and he used like uh, the entropy like and we choose only five uh, five uh, best features two from the color and uh, one from the texture and two from the skeleton. Okay. And so I think that it is very hard now in machine learning projects uh, so to do a very feature engineering in order to select uh, so some ones at the end. Maybe uh, now we uh, talk about end-to-end -end deep learning projects. So when we, uh, we, we give just our image or yes. our data, structured data or unstructured data, and then the, uh, the, the machine learning or the deep learning uh, uh, Deep learning block can detect, can predict the uh, the right uh, class or the right target. Uh, so, uh, did you know? Uh, I think so. It is uh, very interesting to use uh, image uh, embedding. So, did you uh, uh, choose or did you uh, use this this uh, or to, or use this 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 uh, this technique instead of uh, all this feature engineering techniques. Uh, sorry, I didn't Did understand have... the question. Yeah, okay. So we can take your image and yes. instead of do uh, many uh, future engineering techniques, we can, for example, generate image embedding. So we can represent the whole image by a vector, a rich semantic vector uh, yes. that represent this image and then fed this image into your uh, machine learning algorithm. Mm, no, I didn't try this, but uh, I will, inshallah. Okay, okay. So try to use uh, embedding and just for it. So do you know that a machine learning project is an empirical experimental project? So you, you, we, we have to experiment. We, a lot of a lot of techniques, a lot of uh, uh, so uh, we have to tune a lot of parameters in order to uh, get uh, so uh, results or good results at the end. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So uh, thank you, uh, uh, 
uh, for your pr nice presentation, for your uh, nice uh, so uh, field and approach. And uh, merci à vous, Monsieur. Yeah, okay. Donc merci, Professeur Nfawi, pour les questions, l'intervention très intéressante et les remarques. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions, d'autres questions parmi les participants Donc il y a Afaf. Vous avez la parole, Afaf. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Afaf Wuhut, uh, professor at Faculty of Science. First of all, I would like to thank Yusuf for his uh, nice presentation. So all my comments are, uh, or most of my comments have already been addressed by uh, other professors. So what I find missing in, the, in this presentation is the uh, presentation of the data set. Because uh, the, the, the evaluation metric that you will use uh, later depend primarily on the distribution of your samples. If you have a, a, a highly unbalanced data set, so using or reporting results in terms of accuracy will have no sense because your, uh, your model will train primarily on uh, the, uh, the, the majority class. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but uh, the presentation of how many samples do you have for each class you consider it uh, will, uh, will highly impact uh, the choice of, uh, of your evaluation metric. Uh, yes, thank you. I understand the question, but uh, uh, I I didn't uh, write it on the, the the diapo. But I say it that I we have uh, twenty uh, sample of images, and uh, yes, is the the data sets are not uh, like one hundred thirty from non melanoma and fifty percent from melanoma. And uh, when we find on the literature, all work like that. So this is why we, if we want to, to see the impact of uh, our proposed approach, we should compare like the same. So we use the, the same architecture, like they work uh, with, the, with imbalance uh, data set like that. Okay, so if your data, if your data set is highly unbalanced, you should uh, tr uh, try other metrics for evaluation because accuracy is not, uh, uh, an appropriate metric in, uh, in these uh, situations. Maybe you should try uh, the F1 score or other, uh, other metrics or, uh, or reporting the results in terms of sensitivity and specificity. specificity. Okay. So that was, uh, that was my, uh, my only comment. Thank you again Thank you. for your, uh, Th for your you. presentation. Thank you. Merci, thank you, professeur. C'est Khalid. Donc, euh, oui, je peux. We switch to the next presentation. Thank you, Philadelphie. Uh, thank you. Yes, okay. Khalid. Thank you. Et donc, et donc, pour résumer un peu euh, ce qui était dit, ce qui était fait, bien sûr, euh, la plupart des questions, c'était des portées vraiment pour donc éclaircir un petit peu votre travail. Il fallait un petit peu donner plus d'informations sur le dataset parce que c'est très intéressant pour présenter donc des chiffres et de donner donc des, des scores sur des tableaux. Donc, le plus important, comme a dit le plus, Habib, Habib Nifawi et les intervenants, donc, c'est le dataset est très intéressant. Euh, il est rappelé, donc, les, les paramètres, donc, et l'ensemble des, des, des paramètres sur lesquels vous avez travaillé, comme vous avez donc la démarche que vous avez fait, c'est bon. Il faut éclaircir un petit peu le détail. Donc, le détail qui peut un petit peu donner une vraie image sur donc, les statistiques que vous présentez sur le tableau. Mais apparemment, avec les questions, il paraît que vous avez donc, ces informations, simplement que vous n'avez pas présenté sur, votre dia, dia, sur les diapos. Donc, merci infiniment pour votre merci à vous. présentation. Je passe à M. Abdouard. Thank you, Professor Fizadi. Donc, so, we're going to switch to the next presentation. Donc, euh, FT, Donc, je crois déjà partagé. D'accord, c'est tr très bien. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Si tu allez désactiver votre son. Ok, my name is Eftihia Badeka and I am postgraduate student. Hello. 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 
and uh, I am postgraduate student at Emfield program on uh, advanced technologies in informatics and computers in International Hellenic University in Greece. And I am here to present you the evaluation of local binary patterns uh, in retinal blood vessel segmentation using machine learning. The aim of this work is uh, the study of the local binary pattern, a uh, very robust uh, visual descriptor, uh, and its variance in a specific, sp specific problem of retinal blood vessel segmentation. And uh, in this methodology, we test this uh, future extraction on three different machine learning models of uh, SVM, a support vector machine, key nearest neighbor, and uh, decision tree with random forest. We use this methodology as a part of an automated segmentation task on retinal blood vessel images. At the end, we obtain the performance measures for each LBP variant at each machine learning model. There is uh, an increasing interest of applying uh, medical diagnostics in intelligence system because uh, in this specific uh, problem, we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, can you see my uh, no no exactly we are seeing just the can can you read the, the overview uh, or I... no no okay i will i will do it like this it's okay okay so we have a uh, an increasing interest on applying automating a segmentation task because uh, the specific uh, examination of the eye can provide uh, many details like uh, eye, eye diseases or diabetes or uh, also cardiovascular disease. Uh, this uh, this uh, image consists of uh, the two basic uh, elements of tissue of or vein and also they can give us uh, the structure, the segmentation task can give us the structure of the vein of the eye. Uh, when we have this uh, kind of uh, segmented result, we can give better diagnosis. But uh, the problem is uh, that uh, this task happens manually and imagine how many times it takes to uh, label each pixel if it is a tissue, zero or one as a vein. So that's why computer vision comes to uh, solve this problem of automating this uh, task. We use uh, uh, some, uh, we use uh, the drive data set. Of course, there are many uh, data sets uh, on the internet because uh, retinal uh, eye images uh, are uh, under researched and there are many papers about uh, this. There are many methodologies. Uh, we chose uh, the drive data set, which consists of 40 RGB retinal images with a resolution of 565 and uh, 584 pixels. Uh, we have uh, also in this uh, data set uh, two folders of uh, manually segmented images. And uh, we have also uh, the corresponding field of view mask images, because as you see before, the image has also a black field. Uh, around it. Uh, now, we use uh, original uh, LBP. Uh, no, uh, LBP uh, means uh, that it is the main idea of each one. Uh, we have the local binary pattern, which uh, proved uh, uh, to be very robust. Uh, they have some abilities, uh, and the main abilities are uh, they are a, a texture measure. They can recognize the textures. They are tolerant monotonic illumination tails. They uh, are very simple to compute, and also they detect small-scale textures. Uh, the basic uh, LBP uh, perform these actions, whilst the others uh, have uh, uh, implemented uh, with different ways. But the main concept is uh, the calculation uh, of a neighboring pixel with the central value. How it happens? We have the central value, and we take also the area around uh, the central value and we compare it uh, with the central value. If we have a higher neighboring pixel, then the value will be one. Uh, 
T, instead of we have the opposite. So after this uh, extraction of uh, binary uh, elements, we can, uh, we can have uh, eight neighboring pixels, uh, which consist of uh, a new uh, LBP value. We can uh, decode it by uh, clockwise, uh, by clockwise. Uh, we can have this uh, decimal code. Uh, after the extraction of each LBP pixel, we can see that we have uh, a new LBP image, uh, which consists of the new uh, LBP values. Now, I have here a table. Uh, we have uh, the, the, the description of each LBP, and also we have the abbreviation. Uh, we will see the abbreviation uh, in, other, in our experiments. And also we have the futures, uh, which is the range of, uh, which is the range of uh, values. Also, we have the characteristics of each local binary pattern, which uh, says which uh, uh, LBP has a uh, uh, very specific region. So, uh, we have the... OLBP, which is the main LBP, and also we have the variance measure, var LBP, which is an implement implementation of LBP. We have the uh, rotation invariance uh, and uniform LBP, which is the ELBP. Uh, with, uh, those are the implementation by the same team who created LBP. And also we have other variants from the, the, the rest of the community, the rest of the research community, uh, that uh, offers uh, many other ability and they are especially for background subtraction. Uh, some of them have uh, less sensitivity to noise, uh, others has robustness. CSLTP has detailed local information and SILTP has small tolerance rate. Uh, SILTP has compact decoding. Each one has different abilities, but the main uh, concept is the LBP calculation. Our methodology, uh, we have these simple steps. We take the image, the RGB image, we pre-process it, and then we extract 10 different uh, LBP-like features. After we perform uh, classification, and at the end we perform post-processing. The pre-processing step. From RGB, we uh, choose uh, the green channel. Uh, this, uh, this is a proposal from uh, other methodologies uh, in this problem. Uh, as we see here, uh, the green channel uh, gives us uh, more clear information about the uh, red veins. And uh, if you see the others red and blue, uh, they, they lose many information on the veins and we don't want it. Uh, one other challenge we um, have uh, to to perform was a uh, noise reduction because uh, at, uh, initially we performed uh, with this simple pre-processing step and we had uh, noise uh, pres uh, present uh, in uh, future extraction and also in prediction. So that's why uh, we, uh, we pe perform our Gaussian blur in, with S sigma uh, equal to two. We chose this parameter after many experiments. And now you see the LBP future extraction. Uh, these images are the LBP images. As you see, uh, each one has different uh, description. And after this LBP extraction, we uh, create a nine size ve future vector, which consists of uh, nine uh, elements, nine pixels. The one, the one is uh, the central value, and the others are the neighboring pixels. Uh, we give them, uh, we give this uh, nine size feature vector as, uh, as input for machine learning model. Also for the classification, we remove the field of view uh, from the image because uh, the other frame is not consisting uh, any information. We want only the information of tissue or vein. And uh, then we perform a 10 cross validation for three different models, uh, each one uh, for different uh, LBP extraction. And uh, 
after uh, this, so we choose the, the hyper parameters and we train uh, the set with the first 15 image and we test with uh, the rest of uh, 25 images. Now, out uh, post processing, we uh, perform some actions to uh, bet for better quality uh, for every for um, all LBP extraction all all uh, the machine learning result uh, is the same so we increase the image uh, resolution for time for uh, from its original size we remove uh, small objects and then applying a morphology filter opening and uh, after all this we decrease uh, the image size back to normal and uh, also we convoluted with the one deleted mask to subtract the cycle that surrounds the image. As you see here, we have this error. This is uh, uh, from LPP extraction. It obtains this uh, as information, but it is not necessary. So that's why we perform the post-processing. After all of this, we have here the performance indices of, of each one. We measure accuracy, specificity, uh, sensitivity, and area under curve. Uh, for each one, we have different metrics, uh, different performance. Uh, the original LBP seems to be very good uh, around for a precision tree, has very good performance. Uh, background traction LBP has a few numbers better. And uh, as uh, you see, SILTP uh, seems to be better, but as we see here, ELPP, uh, rotation invariant LBP, have a better uh, performance on KNN. So the results are uh, that uh, ELBP outperforms with the KNN classifier and has also the highest performance. Uh, we, we have a better uh, uh, specificity uh, and accuracy. Accuracy is not uh, the best metric for our situation because we have many zeros and ones. So we uh, look mostly at specificity and sensitivity. And this is the predicted result of uh, ELBP. So the conclusion is that not all uh, LBP-like descriptors are appropriate for describing any type of textures. Of course, this variance was uh, mostly for background subtraction, but uh, they performed well. And also we, we have the same methodology for every LBP. If we uh, change the methodology, maybe we'll we will have better performance to others. Uh, for example, uh, in my research, I saw that uh, SILTP performed uh, without noise reduction, outperformed from others. But in our situation, uh, we have uh, an LBP uh, anyway outperformed. It, this is the unique uh, extended LBP. Uh, the segmentation also as a classification procedure has to be revisited. Uh, the more effective handling of the high volume data. Also, high resolution would be very helpful and uh, many other things. Uh, so, this work was supported by the EMFIL program, Advanced Technologies in Informatics and Computers, hosted by the Department of Computer Science, International Hellenic University, Greece. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, Professor Fazazi. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, sweet cheap presentation. I'd, li I'd, I'd like to, to, clear, don't, to, to add some, some clarification of your presentation by, by asking some questions. Yes. Your, yes, okay. So I will start by because you uh, these subjects I've learned uh, uh, so many papers that are talking about uh, about, about your uh, about uh, original blue visual segmentation using machine learning. Mm -hmm. You are not first. Uh, yes. Your, 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 your presentation I said that you have not given us a set of arts. 
So that's what is existing, what is existing in literature before you are, you are adding your contribution. This is the first thing I'd like to know. The second, there's some things that need, that, that uh, need to clarify. It's, we are talking about, uh, because there is uh, machine learning, we are talking about machine learning. We'd like to know what is NETS architecture, what, what are NETS, Next Next app. architecture yeah, models, what are activation function, what are type of regularization, optimization, and uh, loss function, for example, to appreciate different uh, uh, scores as us. I, I, to, to start by its, its architecture, how many layers are you using in your in your uh, I don't okay. hear very well. The internet have a problem. Please, uh, yeah, can you? There is really there is uh, some uh, problem in connection. I, I would like to ask you why, first my of my question. I'd like to know about Nets architecture. How many layer layer do you use in your architecture? In net, net, neural networks, how many layer do you use? Uh, no, I don't have a, uh, I have the random forest decision tree, no neural no network, no, only a Canon classifier. And uh, uh, but I have SVM. But you, yes, but you use your algorithms, support uh, vector function, no? Uh, yes, yes, Le linear. I used linear, uh, linear mm. SVM. Uh, I have uh, every parameter in uh, our paper. Uh, there are more, uh, I have uh, in details there, the numbers. Uh, for SVM, uh, I used, uh, after 10 cross validation, I found the parameters uh, 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 and uh, I used them to have this uh, result. Uh, I don't know if I understood the question well. So. <laughs> because I'm interested in, uh, I'm a, I, my interest is about architecture. We are, we would like, like to implement, yeah, we'd like to implement in uh, our uh, algorithms in software. Soft uh, I have, okay. With software. No, what algorithms do you use? Algorithms. Uh, I, uh, I have uh, from Python uh, some libraries, SVM. Uh, Skick it learn. Uh, I use uh, this kind of uh, algorithms. What, what type of libraries? What? Can you precise? Can you precise the type of libraries that you use? Library. The libraries. Uh, okay. Uh, I do, I don't uh, I don't mention here uh, the libraries of uh, machine learning. Uh, I I just. Uh, with Python, when I perform the, my extraction and every others, I just imported from Python uh, from uh, the basic uh, libraries they have uh, for uh, machine learning. Uh, but you don't have, did you have uh, an exact uh, idea about the libraries? But because you use it to, to give us a, a result, the treatment of your different uh, parameters pass by these libraries because this is the algorithm, this is the implementation. Uh, Do you uh, have an idea about libraries that you use? Yes. Uh, uh, libraries I have uh, for, uh, from, uh, for SVM, I, I use it uh, from uh, SVM, but a way to, to, give, to give you from paper, uh, if I have- I, if, I, if I can, excuse me. Yes, yes, I've got it. Okay. Professor Fazazi, it's it's very oh. hard to 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 get the names there. Uh, she, she she is presenting uh, her work. Okay. Donc, uh, yes. I, I think that the implementation was in uh, Python using the standard library. Also, floor or what? Yeah. Yes. And uh, what uh, Professor Fazazi was talking it's about uh, was talking about algorithms <laughs> and. That mean uh, LBP. Why? Why did you choose uh, LBP uh, yeah. for classification? What? What? Uh, what algorithm did you use? What are the parameters? Uh, 
uh, dots. Yes. Uh, yeah. I have uh, I have the parameters uh, in my in the table three on paper. Uh, yes. I didn't uh, use them in the uh, presentation because uh, there are many numbers. I have thirty uh, parameters inside for each LBP extraction, and also local binary patterns. Want, we wanted to test how they can perform on uh, details such like uh, veins, and uh, the retina eye has. Uh, uh, the, challenge, the challenge of uh, obtaining the detailing veins. So uh, we saw how they can perform in this specific uh, situation. And okay, it was... Uh, okay, it's okay. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. you can take your speech. Yeah? Okay. Professor uh, Nfawil Habib. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Professor. Okay, yeah, so uh, thank you, uh, Professor Sabri, Professor Fazazi. Uh, so, uh, each year, so thank you so much for your uh, presentation, for your uh, good research paper, in my uh, point of view. So, uh, so thank here you. I saw uh, uh, a good background uh, about this, so uh, a local binary pattern. And so used for uh, uh, with three uh, classifiers. So here we have a type of uh, research paper when we can uh, uh, so save more time in order to pick what local binary pattern type and uh, with this at least the three classifiers. So my first question is about how did you pick? exactly those three machine learning algorithms and not other ones? Uh, I tested at first KNN because I knew that uh, it, it is uh, robust, robust uh, in uh, relation to others. And I saw in, in experiments that, okay, I can have a good result also. Uh, my, the first idea was to support vector machines. Uh, with RBF, which has more computational time. Um, and uh, also had a very good performance. And for the others, I, I wanted to try what uh, can I have with uh, also random forest and decision trees. And also this proved to be very Good uh, in related uh, in relation to others. Also, okay. I would I would like to mention that uh, LPP extract uh, LPP code is uh, from a library uh, that is mentioned in on the paper. Uh, there is already code uh, on C++, and uh, there is uh, free to test and see how uh, LPP performs. Okay. Okay, so thank you. So the uh, second question is about the type of noises that you have in this type of images. Yes. So you can, for example, so uh, uh, go back to the uh, slide that presents this noise. Uh, I don't have uh, exactly here the noise. Yeah, so uh, here you, uh, uh, so you have gave here just the uh, formula of the noise reduction, but we, we would like to, to, to know about this uh, noises, so the sources of yes. this noises and so on. Uh, the, the images, because of the uh, uh, low resolution, uh, they consist of a lot of noise. And I also on the paper I have uh, explained explain, uh, how uh, the LBP extraction perform and the, I have also these images without uh, noise reduction and width. Also uh, the pro uh, in the research community they proposed uh, a medium blur. Uh, so uh, we, we knew that uh, there was uh, this problem of noise uh, in specific issue. Uh, okay. Okay, the last one uh, so is about uh, so a table that you uh, uh, gave here uh, uh, on about the cross validation. So you can uh, yes. yeah cross validation. So here, so uh, uh, so really, I have uh, I understand 
I hear your stream that uh, contains just, so you, you, you choose just 15 images, whereas in the testing, you use 25 images. So for me, in a machine learning project, we have, so usually, so the training set is uh, uh, big than the dev set or the test set. So here, do you, can you explain me? Uh, yes, because of the, we, we built it also uh, nine uh, size vector uh, to uh, train the model. Uh, we wanted to see how uh, can perform if uh, with those images uh, we can have this uh, result also. Uh, if I remember well, uh, the manually segmented images, I think it was uh, 20. Uh, so but, but here, so so uh, please, here it is very hard to assess this 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 choice. Okay, choice, so yes, yes. Uh, so so in machine learning, so we we so we train a model on a huge on a data set, and then we try to generalize it. So yes. using how its performance on a on a test set or a data set. So we, so uh, 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 I can't believe here that your train set contains more than your test set. Yes. I, I think that you have to, to inverse, to change this, uh, this, uh, this two sentences. Okay. Yes. So, okay. You, you have right about this. Yes, uh, of course, uh, uh, there are a few. Uh, it will be a good opportunity to test uh, with more images, of course. Oh, okay, so thank you, and so I, I so I, I believe that you enjoyed this uh, conference. And <laughs> you are uh, you are most welcome, Eticia. Thank you. Yes, I would like to visit Morocco, but uh, due to circumstances, it was not. Uh, but okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Nfawi, uh, for uh, advanced questions. The questions asked by Professor Nfawi are very very important. So he, he, is, he is talking by the eye of an expert. And unfortunately, the students uh, are in, uh, uh, in the learning stage. So the questions asked, the, the, the answer of the, the algorithm used is because generally we, we, we should, we should uh, know about uh, features of each of uh, classifier algorithm. So the choice made will be justif justified. But for students in uh, first year or second year, generally they used algorithms uh, already used in other uh, papers. The, so Professor Nfawi uh, really gives, uh, gives you uh, good, good remarks and Questions. Don't, uh, last question will, will be asked by Youssef. Youssef, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm here. here. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, I, I have to thank uh, uh, Bedela for the research presentation. And I think that is really very interesting. Uh, I have just some yeah. question. Uh, the first one was on on your data set data set, data set you used. Yes, I, I agree with Mr. Uh, Nfawi that normally we have to train much that uh, we test and validate. So we have to uh, to to train on on, on more data that uh, that in tests. And uh, I don't know how uh, you think that forty or uh, forty images are are sufficient to train your model. I think even uh, the simple model needs uh, hundred much to, to, so to train. And, uh, uh, we, because of uh, obtaining only, only the pixel, we turn the elements of pixels to a single array. So we had uh, actually a large data set, not uh, the, as much as uh, pixels. Uh, so uh, we trained the pixel, the nine uh, size vector to correspond. Uh, 
so I, I saw it differently of the side of the image. I saw I just print only pixels. Uh, but uh, what uh, was your question about uh, exactly? I think that is another reason to you, to, to the need of more data. More because data. You have, yes. You have really much data to uh, to classify. I think yes. uh, you, the the method used is. Uh, segmentation as a classification task using girl felt uh, masks yes, yes. I, think I, it will be, yeah? I think it will be yeah i think it of course it will be uh, a lot better as for a uh, machine learning to to train with more uh, yes. and also uh, I, if i have to explore more i would like to uh, train this with uh, high resolution images to see uh, with high resolution image, we have more pixels for every image, so we have more data. Okay, I have another question about about the uh, uh, metrics used in your model. You use the accuracy as yes. metrics to uh, measure the performance of your model, but I think uh, 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 accuracy will not really reflect the performance of your model because uh you know uh, your images are in nature imbalanced because because you have uh i, I think uh, the whole vix of vessels in the image will present just five or uh, ten percent of the, the the pixels uh, we have in uh, in image so uh when data data are imbalanced and in the case uh, for uh of, of segmentation i think there are other metrics that are uh, more uh, real, real, like dice. I don't think if uh, you have uh, are you heard about dice. Dice measure the uh, overlapping between the uh, predicted segmentation and and the uh, throughout the ground segmentation. So it's uh, it's a matrix that give uh, really uh, how your model is uh, is uh, performing. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, how uh, can you say just the last words? Uh, what did you say? Uh, uh, I said that dice is, dice uh, is yes the metric the most used yes, to uh, measure the performance of uh, segmentation models. Mm -hmm. uh, it measures the overlapping between predicted uh, results and the growth run, uh, throughout the results. The mask used for training. So you have to uh, in, in in next work to use these uh, these uh, metrics for evaluate your model. Dice, uh, is, okay. Yes. Uh, dice and intersection of the union. Uh, yes, so, exactly. Yes. Uh, uh, for for metrics, uh, uh, I didn't understand so well, but uh, I stayed at the uh, accuracy, as you said before, that it is not reliable. Uh, be also because we have only a small amount of I ones uh, in um, image, yeah. so that's why we have the others of specificity and sensitivity. It's more reliable than accuracy in our situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, for uh, other uh, metrics, of course, I will try to see uh, for segmentation. For um, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Thank uh, you. Last question. Thank you, you said in your conclusion that Sandra, you said Yusuf, Sandra, yes. Okay, Yusuf, focus can, can you can uh, you can you answer answer that is yourself, Yusuf? To know. Ah uh, yes, I'm uh, I'm a PhD student from Casablanca. Okay. Okay. Uh, last question, Yusuf, please. Okay, you said in your conclusion that segmentation as a classification task must be uh, revisited. Yes. Uh, uh, in my knowledge, actually, this is the most used way, especially in deep learning. Why, yes. your, why we must have, uh, must be revisited? What is the problem in this uh, approach? Uh, about, uh, uh, okay, deep learning solves many problems, of course, uh, but uh, also uh, will be, it will be revisited because uh, uh, it, uh, I, I found uh, of these experiments that we can find uh, a good result uh, in a very quick uh, way in, with these simple machine learning techniques. And of course, machine, deep learning uh, solve uh, many other problems uh, uh, in a, a very unique way. Uh, so. I, I Thank mean, you. 
Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we will go to the, the next oh, presentation. So, this is Yassine. So, next presentation, early detection of COVID-19 by deep learning, transfer, combining, and it's okay, will be presented by Yassine. Mishbel. Go ahead. Uh, yes, in Mishbel, we cannot hear you. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Hello. <laughs> Perfect. Hello? Oh, no. Hello. It's okay. Yeah, I can, I can hear you now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So before I uh, start my presentation, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Yassim Shbel. I'm in second year master degree in big data analytics and the smart system uh, in faculty of science Dar al Maraz. Uh, so, uh, before uh, going to the main presentation, I would like to introduce the content of uh, the presentation. Uh, well, uh, first uh, of all, we will uh, begin with an introduction. And second part, we will talk about the problematic and solution. And the third part, we will show our methodology. And uh, the fourth part, we will uh, display results. And finally, uh, a conclusion and uh, a future work. As an introduction, uh, as you know, uh, the novel coronavirus outbreak continues to surprise uh, the world. Uh, to date, uh, more than 7 million people across the 200 countries approximately uh, have been infected, uh, according to the last uh, update of the World Health Organization. And uh, approximately uh, 400,000 confirmed deaths among the cases report. And uh, humanity had uh, not faced a pandemic through uh, the history, uh, uh, as you know. Uh, in Wuhan city uh, of China recorded the first case of the novel coronavirus, and now we see that the virus has spread uh, all over the world. Uh, we see uh, increasing in Europe, uh, in America, and Africa, uh, and Morocco, we recorded more than 8,000 cases, as you know. Uh, and uh, about uh, the standard COVID tests are called the RT-PCR tests, which look uh, for the presence of uh, the virus uh, or antibodies produced in response uh, to uh, infection. So uh, the problematic here, uh, in the meantime, uh, we face some uh, problems in diagnosis and uh, detection. Uh, the COVID-19 tests are expensive. Uh, uh, and uh, cannot be insured uh, by many rural areas and uh, remote uh, areas. So uh, RT-PCR, uh, tests, which is the golden star, the, of course, of uh, for detecting the presence of the novel coronavirus, takes a lot of time, between three hours uh, to six hours, and carry out in laboratories uh, and usually in city centers uh, that demand time-consuming precision, and this uh, causes a significant uh, problem. Uh, finally, the real, uh, reliability of RT-PCR test is between uh, 50 uh, and 18% uh, uh, to identify uh, an, uh, an effective individual. Uh, about the so solution. Uh, so, uh, as a solution, we uh, propose a parallel diagnostic, di diagnostic and test procedures uh, using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, 
and uh, by leverage, leverage of course of historic, uh, historical uh, image, uh, radiological image, uh, images of uh, patients infected by this, this uh, novel coronavirus. And uh, we will employ deep learning systems uh, to aid clini clinical diagnosis uh, of COVID-19. And uh, also, uh, we will uh, use a chest X-ray uh, uh, machine uh, is because it's readily transparent in rural areas and isolated uh, areas. And also, uh, chest X-ray machine is an inexpensive uh, technology, as, as you know. So, uh, uh, about our methodology, uh, methodology uh, we will mention uh, here four parts. Uh, collecting data, pre-processing and data augmentation, CNN architectures that we used, and finally, uh, an ensemble classification. Uh, data set that uh, we use uh, is the, we have two source of data sets. The first, uh, the first data set uh, under name COVID, just X-ray data set by Joseph Paul Coyne and uh, Paul Morrison from the University of uh, Montreal, uh, which is contained more than 230 radiographic images. And uh, the second data set is a uh, chest X-ray data set from Kaggle, contain 5,863 uh, chest X-ray images collected uh, from Guangzhou Woman and Ch Children Medical Center uh, in uh, Guangzhou, uh, China. In this data set, the different levels are uh, provided, uh, normal patient and uh, bacteria pneumonia patient. And as you can see, uh, this is the, uh, in this figure, uh, on the left, we have uh, uh, an X-ray image of COVID-19 case and in the middle, uh, we have a normal case. And finally, we have uh, an X-ray images uh, represent the bacteria pneumonia case. Uh, this is some uh, just X-ray images sample. Uh, it looks like we have uh, here uh, a problem of uh, mixed data source because uh, because uh, uh, our data have uh, have uh, not subject to the same preprocessing, and uh, all the image uh, are uh, as you can see clearly different in the amount of black bars. Uh, most of COVID. Uh, uh, cases chest x-ray uh, take up most of screen with little to no black bars on the sides the other data set from Kaggle uh, which is uh, which we got uh, we get the the normal and pneumonia cases has have uh, uh, mostly uh, black bars on the sides of each image and this become a problem uh, because uh, uh, our model uh, later might learn that uh, it's just need to to look at a uh, bar, bar uh, black bars on the cider to distinguish between covid-19 uh, samples and normal samples and al also uh, pneumonia sample uh, and we will deal uh, with this problem in uh, the preprocessing uh, part so after a manual inspection of the data set it has um, uh, apparent that uh, uh, almost 20% of covid-19 images uh, and 19% uh, of 90% uh, of uh, normal cases images and 90% of uh, other pneumonia cases uh, have uh, this this kind of uh, black box. So uh, about our final data set that we took from this two second uh, two source of data. Uh, contain 560 uh, X-ray images, uh, 146 X-ray images of COVID cases, and 210 of X-ray images of each class, normal and pneumonia. So about the splitting, we have uh, we have uh, uh, we took 70% of our data set was used to, as a training set, including the validation set, of course. And uh, 30 30% uh, of our data set was uh, used uh, as a, as a test uh, as a test set. And about the, the splitting of our data, we use a stratify uh, splitting uh, to divide the data set into the training set and the, the test set with the 
the same uh, proportion of each uh, class uh, level. Uh, now let's move to the next parts of methodology uh, pre-processing. Uh, as you can see, uh, in this uh, pre-processing, we have uh, the problem of mixed data source that we have mentioned uh, before. So our data have not been, because our data have not been subject to the same pre-processing, and all images are clearly different in the amount of uh, black bars. So uh, we, uh, we, we, have, we create a script that could remove the black bars from these regions. Uh, after, uh, after running the script, we, uh, we got uh, uh, the following result, uh, as you can see on the right of uh, the, the slide. And also, we, are, we use, uh, we use uh, data augmentation techniques to, to better generalize uh, the models and prevent uh, the, the overfitting. About the data augmentation techniques, we have used many, uh, like we have used uh, rotation technique uh, and horizontal uh, flipping. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we use horizontal flipping to deal with uh, the symptoms of pneumonia uh, on each uh, side of uh, the chest. Uh, chest and, uh, and we also, we use uh, what we call the normalization in uh, our images, our X-ray images. Uh, our proposed method, uh, our, our method uh, uh, based on combining several, uh, several uh, convolutional neural network architectures yeah, using ensemble, uh, ensemble, uh, ensemble method. And uh, we use uh, deep, uh, deep transfer learning uh, to leverage from deep learning models, which trained on, uh, on uh, millions of data uh, or on different problem uh, and use it to and use it to similar problem. And, uh, and of course, uh, we find tuned, uh, uh, we find tuned some, some layers uh, on each pre-trained model uh convolutional neural network to to extract uh, specific uh, features from uh, our data uh, which contain just uh, x-ray images uh, and also uh, we use uh, this this method of transfer learning is uh, is a very useful technique and have uh, has given a, a good result uh, in a classification problem as you can see in the figure on the right, we have uh, pre-trained convolutional neural network architectures extracted, extracted from the famous data set, which is uh, an ImageNet uh, data set that we use uh, in uh, our project. So about uh, the architectures uh, of our model, uh, here we have uh, a figure, as you can see. Uh, summarized all process of our method. Uh, so uh, our proposed model consists of, of uh, three main process as shown on the left, as you can see here. Uh, the, first the first process uh, uh, consists of uh, image prep processing and data augmentation with the resize, uh, to, uh, resize image to uh, 2024. Uh, 204. The second process consists of using seven pre-trained convolutional neural network uh, extracted from ImageNet dataset. And the last process is the classification and the projection through a fully connected CNN made up of uh, several classifiers. And uh, at the output of, uh, of uh, the CNN networks, uh, a projection vector uh, is, uh, is obtained. A projection uh, vectors uh, is obtained. Uh, for example, uh, and the final and the final output, uh, uh, we we put uh, the 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 result of uh, the projection vectors. For example, if we have three COVID nineteen and the two normal and two pneumonia cases, uh, the final output will be uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, in the results. Of here we have a result of sample method and each model on the test set. So uh, as you can see, uh, we were able to make uh, best performance with the ensemble learning, ensemble method through uh, through combining this uh, predicted predicted class of each model in a vector 
and we take uh, the, the class which was the most frequent predicted by all models. And we see here that we, have, we, we got 98.66% of uh, precision and 98.33% uh, per uh, uh, in terms of, uh, of recall and accuracy with 98%. Uh, uh, here we have a confusion matrix uh, of each model and also the, the confusion matrix related to uh, the ensemble method. We notice that uh, the, the confusion matrix of the ensemble method uh, was uh, able uh, to predict correctly uh, almost uh, all the chest X-ray images except uh, the, the two images that belong to pneumonia cases. Uh, but we, uh, we uh, the our method predicted as uh, a normal uh, cases, but all COVID cases has been uh, classified uh, correctly. Uh, so uh, here, uh, in order to show uh, the efficiency of the detection and the localization of the preliminary lesions, we use the concept of gradient cam to detect uh, the region where the model focused more to classify uh, and uh, make uh, the decision. So as you can see in this uh, figure, uh, we have the same image from the test set. Uh, on the right, we have uh, the visual result obtained by GradCam. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, a yellow regions uh, represent uh, the area areas uh, where uh, the convolutional neural network uh, paid uh, attention uh, during uh, the, the classification. So as a, a conclusion and future work, uh, in our project, we employed many convolutional neural network architectures using transfer learning concepts. We were able to determine, determine characteristic features from uh, chest X-ray, uh, uh, and we take advantage of seven CNN models to build an uh, ensemble learning model that uh, outperform uh, all other uh, models. Uh, as a future work, we will employ our method with the large data sets uh, to give an accurate and efficient result and also to generalize uh, more our model. Uh, and last, uh, we will also work with the CT scan images uh, so while uh, we will uh, work with CT scan images, uh, when uh, we we get uh, uh, an available and reliable uh, data set. And thank you uh, for your attention. Uh, thank you, Michel, for the nice pre presentation. Thank you. Is there any question? Uh, I have one question. Why do you use? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. First question is, why do you use uh, transfer learning science uh, uh, image net is not this, has not the same uh, character, characteristic as the, the, the data set you are going to use? So about your question, we use uh, the pre-trained convolutional neural network of uh, ImageNet data sets because uh, uh, it's uh, the most reliable data set that contain millions of data and, uh, and, we, uh, and we got uh, uh, a good result with this kind of uh, CNN architectures. And uh, unfortunately, there is no, uh, uh, data set uh, of uh, medical image net, uh, like medical imaging, image data set, like uh, image net uh, in field. So uh, we take advantage of this image net uh, data set. That's why. Uh, can you, uh, can we, can we, can we say that uh, the transfer learning or the features extracted from uh, image net mm -hmm. Are, uh, have has improved uh, classification results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, 
uh, in our method, we use uh, we use uh, this pre-trained the pre-trained convolutional neural, ne neural network, and also uh, we we fine tuned some some layers uh, as I mentioned in the presentation to uh, to extract the specific uh, features from our just X-ray images datasets. Okay, uh, Professor uh, Aksas Hamid. Do you hear me, Professor Aksas? Okay, hello everyone. Hello. So, so, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Me, a PhD student, Hamid Aksas from uh, Hamid Aksas, Dakar. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I would like to, to, uh, to ask a question about the architecture of the model you have used. So, in your presentation, I yeah. saw that when you talked about the, the architecture, you have used all the layers of, uh, for example, all already pre-trained CNN, for example, VTG16, VTG19. I, I, when yeah. actually, actually, when we use a uh, transfer learning, we have to modify to, or to change the output layer. I don't see where did you change uh, the, the output layer for your model in the presentation. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mention here the, 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 the architectures, but, uh, about uh, the the last uh, layer uh, of uh, the the architecture, I uh, I use just uh, the weights, uh, the, uh, all the architectures except the last, the last layer, and we uh, replaced with uh, with a layer contain uh, contains uh, three three inputs because we have a three class problem, so uh, we replace the one thousand uh, class that is. Uh, ready from uh, from this uh, this pre-trained models and we replaced uh, with uh, our uh, classification problem which contain uh, three classes so if i understood you just uh, changed the output layer and you keep all the layers yeah. as as they are in the original architecture mm, uh, yeah but but we of course we fine tune we fine tuned some layers, uh, uh, actually, actually uh, last layers uh, on each uh, on each pre-trained models. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we fine tuned uh, to to extract the, the features from our our uh, data set. We didn't take all the weights, and we 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 begin the the training. Thank you, Aksas Hamid. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Professor Nfawi, Habib. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Sabri. Uh, so, uh, uh, thank you, Yassin Mishbel, for, uh, for this presentation. Okay. This, uh, I think this research paper prepared uh, during this period of confinement. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the idea behind using transfer learning in this field, I think uh, you are right. So for my viewpoint, it is a very interesting idea to use uh, transfer learning for this type of project. Uh, I, so I have some question. So I, I understand so that you have here some, we, we can say some, some limitations, some uh, drawbacks, uh, but I understand. So you you are in the uh, second year of your uh, uh, master thesis, but you 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 work or you worked with uh, uh, so uh, a team or a large team uh, formed from uh, doctors so uh, and uh, researcher uh, in this uh, domain. So here I I appreciate uh, so much the the collaboration between so doctors here and. Uh, so our uh, uh, department of computer science. Okay. So the my, my my first comment is about the title. So please, can you go back to the title of your presentation? Yeah. Okay, so uh, here you, 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 you type early detection of COVID-19 by right. deep learning transfer. So we say deep transfer learning, transfer learning not yeah. deep learning transfer. So please uh, correct this yeah. uh, because it is wrong also in the uh, program 
uh, or in this schedule. So this is the, uh, my, my first comment. So the second yeah. one is about, uh, so here you choose to use transfer learning. Yeah. I understand or because you have maybe, so we use transfer learning in the situation when we have, for example, uh, uh, so uh, the, the number of samples or our data set is not big. So here you can, if you can go to the, uh, to the slide uh, where you present your, uh, or you presented your data set. So just for giving us an idea about the number of samples used in this data yeah. set. Yeah. Yeah. Here. So here you have uh, your data set contains maybe so 560 images. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here I understand why do you did you use transfer learning and because you you uh, so you, you want to uh, transfer the knowledge trained or the knowledge, for example, trained in other uh, CNN architecture or in other deep learning architecture in order to gain some features uh, of this uh, of in, your, in your project. So this is very nice, but I have uh, some uh, detailed question about how did you uh, pre-train in this case, or uh, how did you train or retrain your uh, neural network? So here you didn't uh, uh, give, you didn't give any uh, uh, details about uh, 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 layers uh, that you 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 retrained, okay? Yeah, yeah. I can... uh, Do you have some question about this? Uh, about about the architectures, uh, I have mentioned uh, in in the paper uh, each yeah. each architectures and. Uh, and what she, which he, or what is the 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 frozen layers and the fine tuned layers that that we use uh, in the in the training in the in the training step okay when you say when you say fine tuned layers so what parameters what, what hyper parameters did you fine tune so parameter hyper parameters of the uh, i don't say for example in the last layer or uh, you have uh, added other uh, uh, layers, for example, one, two, three, or uh, three layers at okay. the end, and okay. so on. This details is more important when we talk about transfer learning. Yeah, about about uh, the uh, the number of layers that we have fine tuned uh, on each on each uh, pre-trained uh, pre CNN. Uh, we uh, we we fine tuned uh, so, some layers, for example. Uh, in uh, last one, uh, last one. No, no. The, uh, some there is. N uh, it's not the last one, but we we fine tuned uh, the last one, and some others uh, layers uh, came af uh, before the last one. Okay, so you didn't add other layers at the end. No, I didn't uh, use uh, any oh. layers. I use I use a, da a dance a dance net layers after the last layer of the pre-trained convolutional neural network. Okay. Dance so, layers. So I think that in this case, so you you use maybe uh, so you used your uh, the the, the pre-trained architecture yeah. as a, a pre-initialization of yeah. your networks or as a backbone of our architecture. Okay. So uh, another question is about data augmentation. Yeah. I, I, uh, so really, I don't understand why do you want to augment your data? Because, because here, here you use transfer learning yeah. and the basic idea of transfer learning is that we used it when we have much or uh, uh, less more data. In this case, we opt for transfer learning. But here, why you, do you augment? Why do you opt for data augmentation? So this is the first question. And yeah. the second question is about this data augmentation for this type of sensitive images. So when we uh, uh, hear, when yeah. you augment, so when we say data augmentation, so here for images, maybe you have to clip, you have, you have to maybe uh, crop your image and so on. 
And here, because uh, uh, there are medical images, it is difficult to do this data augmentation because we could, for example, we might change some uh, uh, features, maybe. Yeah. Uh, about uh, the data augmentation, uh, I use just uh, a rotation uh, technique and uh, a, fl a flipping horizontal uh, technique. Uh, yeah, we, I, I, I use this, 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 uh, this two, two parameters on uh, the data augmentation because as you know that we, uh, we, we, we use just 560 uh, X-ray images. So yeah, that's, that's why I use uh, uh, that uh, augmentation. Okay, okay. So the last question is about the uh, your data set. So please uh, yeah. uh, go back to the uh, to the slide where you present your data set. So here, uh, yeah, data yeah, set. Here second or here. one. Yeah, the second one. Now the second one. Okay. Yeah, the, the yeah the next one. Here. Uh, so the slide where you talk about the uh, so the percentage of the, the samples in the data sets and the yeah yeah this is not this one maybe previews previews here mm -hmm. uh -huh. previews. previews yeah yeah previews previews, here. previews. no yeah methodology yeah so next next one next next one Next one. Okay, so here. 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 Yeah, yeah, here in the slide. Yeah. So here also I so I have seen here that you have 70% of our data set was used as training set. Training set, yeah. Between parentheses, you type it including the validation set. Said what do you mean? But this phrase between parentheses. Sorry, I can't, I didn't understand the, uh, the question. Can you repeat, yeah. so please? You have 70%, okay? Of, yeah, 70% yeah, of your, the whole data set, the whole examples, the whole samples are used as training set, okay? Training set, yeah. 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 Between parentheses, you added including the validation set. So what do you mean but including validation set? Uh, okay, great. About the validation set, uh, we use uh, this 70% of the data set. Uh, we use 10% uh, of this 70% 70, uh, 70 as, a, as a validation set. That's why I include the, the, the validation set. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so here maybe you can, uh, you can put uh, or type 70% of yeah. the print set and 10% as the validation set uh, or the F set and 30% yeah. as the uh, F set. So uh, finally, I, uh, so I, uh, I appreciate your work as a, uh, as a student in the uh, master thesis uh, okay. that work or who work with other uh, doctors uh, or a large team, Dako. Uh, so uh, many thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nfawi. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Rahat. Sir Rahat, go ahead. Sir Rahat. Sir Rahat. Wait, wait, Sir Khalid. What are uh, Just one uh, question for Yassin Mishra. Uh, okay, if you can really go to the first uh, uh, diapo. First, yeah. You heard me? Yeah, first. Yeah, here. When, uh, no, no, after, don't uh, second or third. When you talk about RPC detection of COVID-19. Uh, RTPCR. RTPCR. Okay. Here, this, the, the third, Okay, here, here. Uh, yeah. here. Okay, thank you, thank you. Just a, a question of theoretical question. Uh, yeah. You know, actually, all the tests that we do in every, in every part of the world, we, we are using RT-PCR tests. To detect COVID, and you mm, pretend that uh, chest X-ray can really do better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How no, no. this affirmation? Yeah? Continue, okay. continue, continue, continue. Okay. How this affirmation is really correct? 
using uh, chis uh, xy how really this affirmation affirmation is really correct at which what which level that you correctness uh, uh, of this affirmation uh, actually, uh, uh, in uh, in the solution, I say that we can use uh, we could use a parallel diagnostic uh, and uh, and uh, take advantage of artificial intelligence to uh, uh, to detect uh, the presence uh, of uh, this this uh, this novel coronavirus. Uh, but uh, the RTC uh, RT PCR uh, remain the the golden standard of uh, of detecting the presence of uh, of course of the presence of uh, the, okay, the novel to coronavirus. Complete, okay, to complete, not to replace. No, no. Okay, thank I you. So go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor uh, Fizazi. Uh, thank you, Yasin, for the nice presentation. Nice yeah, work. Sabri. Sabri. Oui. Rifi. C'est Jamal Rifi. Ah, Yes. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Yasin. I would like first uh, to thank you for the quality of your work and the contribution of such uh, papers to solve uh, the current uh, problem or concerning COVID-19. So, my question uh, concerns uh, the image of tests, so the, the reality. I didn't the uh, of your data set. I, I uh, talk about the reality tests. That's my represents similar, uh, that's my, uh, which concerns some images that contain or that may represent similar symptoms of other, other patho pathologies. And uh, by using your uh, approach, this may give the illusion that is COVID-19, uh, which not uh, be the case. It's uh, my question, uh, is clear or not? Uh, I, I didn't hear you. Can you ah, okay. repeat, can you, can you repeat, can you repeat, please? My question concerned the, the reality images, the yeah, test, yeah. reality images. Yes. But I, I didn't uh, talk about uh, the test of your uh, data set. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the reality image can contain uh, or can represent some symptoms concerning other pathologies. Yeah. And by using or by uh, uh, using your uh, approach based on CNN, yeah. This may give the illusion that is the COVID-19, yeah. uh, which uh, will not be the case. How can you address this problem? Uh, actually, uh, uh, we think that uh, coronavirus uh, has uh, uh, common symptoms in the, in the chest X-ray images. Like uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a radiologist, but I, I think that uh, there, there is, there is a common symptoms that uh, we have in the, 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 the chest uh, X-ray images uh, could, uh, could hel help us to, to, to detect uh, uh, and uh, uh, to detect uh, the, uh, the mm -hmm. this, this kind of uh, coronavirus. Think that uh, okay. Yeah. So I think that there is uh, another pathology having the same the same yeah. symptoms concerning concerning the image medical imaging that you yeah. are using yeah. uh, the X-ray. If you have uh, as as initial uh, study, we have used we are employ uh, the this kind of data set just uh, just X-ray, but in the future we will work uh, with uh, the CT scan images that. Uh, Allow uh, that give us uh, more okay. details about uh, this uh, this uh, novel coronavirus. Or uh, MRI. MRI. MRI or MRI. Thank you, Professor uh, Jamal Rifi. Another uh, question, uh, Professor. Uh, we are very late. Okay, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, thank you another time for your presentation, uh, Yasin. Uh, okay, Sisbrain, you can. Thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Rifi. Thank you, Yasin. Let's quickly move yeah. on uh, to the next presentation. Please, uh, Yasin, uh, stop your yeah. sh sharing. Okay. Okay, so next uh, presentation will be made by, by Ben Ferris. Yes. Can you hear okay, me, sir? Yes. Okay, it's okay. So, good morning. My name is Anas Ben Ferris. Today, I will be giving you a presentation of a development of a clinical decision support system for early, early detection of COVID-19 using deep learning based on chest radiographic images. This research is made within LASIK laboratory and AIDS laboratory under direction of Professor Hassan Qajidka. So, so my presentation <coughs> is divided into four main uh, sections. Firstly, the introduction, the methodology, results and discussion, and finally, the conclusion. So for the definition, in the sum, <coughs> In December 2019, Wuhan is a commercial center in China that has faced an epidemic of a new coronavirus that has killed more than 100 and affected more than thousands of people in the early days of the new coronavirus epidemic. Chinese researchers have named the virus Wuhan coronavirus or the coronavirus 2019. The International Community of Virus Taxonomy has named the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome virus coronavirus 2 and coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19. On March 11, 2019, the World Health Organization declared coronavirus disease an epidemic characterized by the rapid and global spread of the new coronavirus worldwide. So in this particular scenario, one primary thing that needs to be done, and is already started in the majority of the countries, is the multiple testing. The tests are the window to the pandemic and its spread. Without testing, we have no idea and uh, <clears throat> no way to understand this pandemic. The test, the test is the one of the most important tools in the fight to slow and reduce the spread and impact of the virus and it also helped to identify the infected people. But we can understand that uh, these tests are very critical, such a clinical symptoms, epidemiological history, positive CT, X-ray images, positive pathogen tests based on real-time RT-PCR and virus nucleic acid sequencing. But to confirm those two last tests, it must be repeated uh, several times for many cases which constitutes a serious limit for their accuracy. As a, <coughs> as a solution to this problem, we are going to use chest X-ray images as means of detecting this virus COVID-19. But unfortunately, the characteristics of typical pneumonia caused by COVID-19 are confused with the characteristics of other typical inflammatory pneumonias which round the task of detection of COVID-19 by a radiologist very complicated. As a solution of this problem, researchers have used the artificial intelligence and they have already established a list of characteristics extracted from images to detect the presence of COVID-19. Now let's move on to the objectives. So the main objectives of <coughs> this paper are Development, developing a deep learning methods which can extract the graphical characteristic from X-ray images of COVID-19 in order to provide a clinical diagnosis, diagnosis before the test of the pathogen. Build an effective model in detecting COVID-19 by training a CNN model using characteristic extracted from X-ray images. Offering the health communities an accurate, rapid, and effective clinical decision support system for the detection of COVID-19. So <clears throat> for the methodology, uh, our methodology is made up of the collection of data sets, our data set, and deep learning algorithm. So for the collection of data set, 
For the collection of data sets, we, we set up a data set composite of three classes of chest X-ray images. The first class is made up of patients declared positive for COVID-19 that we collected from COVID-19 X-ray data set collected by Dr. Joseph Cohen from the University of Canada, containing images of, of lands with different disease causing pneumonia, such as acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARTS, COVID-19, Middle East respiratory syndrome, MERS, and severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS. The second class consists of images of patients declared without any pneumonia. And the third class consists of images of patients who already had a typical inflammatory pneumonia. The images of the last two classes are, were extracted from NES chest X-ray of 14 common thorax disease categories, published by Wang uh, et al, contain more than uh, <coughs> 112,000 X-ray images of more than 30,000 unique patients, each with corresponding information on age, gender, ID, and etc. These uh, two tests consist of posterior and anterior chest X-ray. So we have trained our model to examine posterior, anterior, the, uh, the PI views. This is an example of PI views uh, of uh, chest ray of admitted patient. So from the left to right, the normal, pneumonia, and COVID-19. In summary, our data set is composed of 100 images for, from uh, COVID-19 for, from COVID for COVID chest X, uh, from uh, COVID-19 chest X-ray data set, 100 images for normal patients, and 100 images for pneumonia. These two last classes were extracted for, from any uh, chest X-ray data sets. So for the split of our data set, we split an our data set into 80% for train and 20% for the test. Now, now I will focus on deep learning algorithm. As you can see, this figure show you the architecture of our deep learning algorithm. We have proposed the architecture composite of three stages. So the first st step is the preprocess of the X-ray images. For that, we resize the input images to uh, 224, 224, and manually we're removing the numbers and edges from images. We focus only on the lens. As you can see, the image in the left is uh, the input images uh, image, and the image at uh, the right is the preprocessed image image. After that, we applied the data augmentation technique in order to increase the data set by a random flipping, scaling, and sharing. The second step will be used to extract the characteristic of images and proceed the learning of the neural network. The third step consists in classifying the different one stuff, a fully connected layer formed by server classifier of which only the high score prediction is predicted. So we use the notion of transfer learning to form our model. We have chosen the VGG-16 already pre-trained. We modified the typical VGG-16 and think to need the, modifi the modified one. During the training phase, the layer were not trained. Expect, expect the last four layers. So the difference between, <coughs> between the VGG-16 and our model in classification lies is in the, full, in the last fully connected layer. We reduce the dimension of feature before it was sent to the final classification. So we add a, con a fully connected layer with 32 neurons, followed by dropout, and a layer with three neuron neurons. So the model was developed using Keras and training using Kaggle GPU. We use Adam optimization for training with a learning rate of uh, 0 0.01 with a mini batch size of uh, 32 and train a 16 epochs, epochs. So for the results and discuss, discussion. <clears throat> so this, this graph will show you the, the curve, uh, the loss curve for uh, the internal uh, validation in the left and uh, the loss curve for external validation in the, in the right. The rock curve is also plotted with, uh, with a tip, uh, true positive rate against a false positive rate for the internal uh, validation in the left and external validation on the, on the right. 
So the true positive the true positive rates on y and y axis and false positive rate, uh, rate is on x axis. Now let's move on to the performance metrics. As you can see, and this table show us uh, show us the performance metric for learning phase, the internal validation and test phase external validation. So the proposed deep learning algorithm yielded a knock of 0.87 for internal validation and 0.95 for external validation. Accuracy was 92.5% and 87.5%. Sensitivity was uh, uh, 92 and 0.87. Specificity was 0.96 and 0.93. The positive predicted value PPV was 0.94 and 0.88. The negative predictive values were 0.97 and 0.93. The kappa values were 90, 90, uh, 88 and 81. The F1 score were 8, 0.92 and 0.88 for internal and external validation respectively. So for the localization part, we used the grad cam to better understand our, uh, our CNN. The grad cam is a method uh, for visually understand our CNN. It is a method for visually evaluating the prediction of CNN model. The, model, the method highlights important region in the input image for a specific results using the gradient of the final convolutional layer. So those Im images show us the region of interest obtained by our algorithm, corresponding of three classes, the normal uh, in, on the right, pneumonia in the middle, and the COVID COVID in the left. The blue color was assigned to the pixel which presented a weak gradient and which did not contribute to the classification by our model. In addition, we gave these six images to our partner team for the radiology department of Fez University Hospital, CHU, made up of rounded radiologists. The latter, surrounded with the, the, <coughs> with the marker, uh, a red marker, the lesion of pathology present on the images. As you can see, the comparison showed that were the, uh, there was a perfect agreement with the location of radiologists and then of our model. So, <clears throat> our model can be offered to the health as an effective clinical decision support system of, uh, for the COVID-19 detection, but not as a, a replacement or as, as a, a radical solution for this for replacement the standard test PCR. So as a, as a, a conclusion, our model is very effective in detecting COVID-19 as a, um, and also can be offered to the head communities as precise, rapid and effective clinical decision support system in COVID-19 detection. And uh, uh, from the previous results, you can, uh, you can see uh, that our model has a perfect agreement with the location of the radiologist of, and that of our algorithm. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sibin Ferris, for the nice presentation, nice work. Is there any question? Uh, I have one uh, question, one uh, remark. Yes, sir. Uh, is because in, in case of uh, uh, medical uh, implementation, I, in my opinion, is to, to use the confusion matrix mm -hmm. to show how, because uh, if we have uh, an input image to check if the patient had uh, has uh, COVID or not? Yeah. Uh, my my fear is to uh, falsely diagnose as no COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. So I can the, the system can made uh, errors in uh, diagnosis diagnose it, uh, diagnosis uh, the patient as COVID nineteen mm -hmm. instead of the C'est-à-dire, uh, contrairement à l'autre cas. Yes. C'est-à-dire, uh, c'est bien compris. 
Yes, yes. The true positive and the true false positive. C'est ça. Yes, yes. So, uh, sir, we, <coughs> we do the matrix confusion uh, on, on this work and uh, uh, it's really perfect. C'est-à-dire, so, uh, yes. à quel niveau? Monsieur, bien classifier les, les true Sans positive. 100%? Per per uh, 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 mostly, mostly. Mostly. Most Environ, yes. Mm -hmm. D'accord. Parce que là, si je, parce que dans la conclusion, une conclusion, you conclude that your system is perfect, and if I the system fail in only one case, such in that uh, the alloy of uh, COVID-19 is higher than uh, the les autres grippes, automatiquement, c'est un problème énorme. Donc, il faut être à 100% dans les forces négatives. Oui, yes, sir. Yes, c'est yes. ça. Donc, mais... D'accord. Est-ce qu'il y a des... Donc, il y a tout... C'est professeur Nfaoui, à vous la parole. Ok, donc, so, uh, je suis très intéressé à toute cette présentation. Uh, So thank you, CNS, uh, uh, our uh, student. Uh, so I know that you are one of the, uh, you can say the, uh, the student that uh, I appreciate. So uh, I have some question about your uh, work. Yes, sir. And so uh, first of all, uh, I think that before talking about the accuracy. You, you have to 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 uh, so to put or to give us to show us what is the the the, the base bias the base accuracy. So uh, it may be human accuracy or another uh, another uh, so technique another approach another uh, decision system. So do you have any uh, idea about the base uh, system or the baseline uh, uh, system in this field? I don't understand the question, sir. If you're yeah, okay. So, okay. So, uh, I I I will reformulate it. So you can uh, go to the uh, uh, slide of the results. Results. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here, for example, uh, you have uh, an accuracy of ninety-two point five percent. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, uh, So I, I want to, 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 to know what is the, 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 the bias, bias, the bias accuracy. So if it is uh, uh, so less than 92%, uh, percent, yeah, it will be perfect for me. I can believe to your, uh, uh, as a doctor, I can believe to your system. But if the base accuracy, the base bias is, for example, about uh, uh, 98%, So your system, so I can't believe to your system. So my question here is clear. What is the base accuracy in this field, in this type of research? Do you have any idea about this? So, so because, because you sum up or you recap at the end of your presentation that this system could be used as a as a decision system, as decision as, support as for doctors. Support, as a support, sir, as yeah. a help, not yeah. a replacement. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, as a support, maybe. This yes, is, yeah, decision support, okay. Yes, so here, I move to another question. Yes, so, sir. but I, I think that it is uh, more interesting. It is, so you have to, to, to give us here to, to put uh, the, all details about the base accuracy in this field. So second question is about this uh, high variance that you have here between the, uh, uh, the train set and the test set. So here you have an accuracy uh, 92.5% yes, on the sir. training set, yes, while sir. in the test set or dev set, you have here an accuracy about 87.5%. Uh, So for me, your model isn't it generalized well. Okay, so my question here is, did you uh, fine tune some parameters in order to correct this high variance? 
No, sir. Uh, the, uh, we just uh, uh, fine tuned the four last layer the, for the uh, typical VGG16. And we add. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you fine tune this parameter for the training set. Okay. Yes, now sir. you have you have eighty percent, eighty seven point five in the test set. So this we can interpret this by a high variance of your model. So it isn't well generalized, and you have to correct your model. You have to maybe add the other dropout layers of regularization techniques. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. So, thank you uh, very much for this thank uh, you, work. Thank you, Professor uh, Nfawi. Uh, Mr. Aksas Hamid, very quickly, please, Aksas. Uh, <coughs> Professor Fizazi, if you have a question. Uh, thank you very much, Sir Dwahid. Thank you. We must pass to another to another term. Yes. Je crois qu'il faut passer à la dernière. D'accord. Donc, thank you, Ben Fares, pour uh, thank you yes. very much. Thank you very uh, much. We'll move on quickly to the next uh, presentation. Okay, sir. It'll be made by Shayma Khudris. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. One second to... Okay, it's okay. Um, Go ahead. Um, uh, yes. We can't, we uh, can't hear you. And, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to share with you the ophthalmotic... Uh, okay. uh, good morning. You can hear me, okay. hear me now? Yes, yes, it's okay. okay yes. It's okay. Go ahead. Very okay. I can start? Okay. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. I'm Dr. Khudri Shayma. I'm uh, ophthalmologist. And uh, it's a pleasure uh, to share with you the ophthalmological opinion about uh, artificial intelligence and uh, ophthalmology. So, as uh, we know, nowadays, the practice of ophthalmology has uh, now lots of changes thanks to technology development. And uh, it's uh, become uh, easier for us to deal with a lot of the surgical eye diseases of this progress couldn't uh, be possible without the contribution of computer scientists and uh, biologists. And now the question is how artificial intelligence should be used to improve our practice in often. For this, we made the literature review in the subject using PubMed and Google Star databases. We looked uh, for the things artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and related macular degeneration. I uh, will start by introducing to you uh, a brief presentation of the eye. Uh, globally, the, uh, you can see here, the eye is divided uh, on two parts, uh, interior segments, uh, which we can describe the cornea, the iris, and the lens, and uh, a posterior segment, including the vitreous and the retina. The retina is the part of the eye that has generated most interest uh, in the application of artificial intelligence. That is why we found it necessary to describe its particularities. Uh, you can see this uh, central area is called the uh, and uh, do you know this is the optic nerve head? For the applications uh, of uh, artificial intelligence, I will start by a retinal pathology that is the most implicated uh, in this uh, subject. It's diabetic retinopathy, which is uh, a real global world problem touching more than 170 subjects. 
and uh, 2.3 million uh, retinal screening are daily performed. Globally, the diagnosis of diabetic retinal is, uh, uh, is uh, easy using sleep lab examination uh, and the main signs of diabetic retinopathy are easy to recognize, uh, including magic spots, uh, cotton wool spots, uh, micro and neovascular. This pathology depends on early detection and uh, timely management. Unfortunately, this, uh, this is not always possible because we have an increased global prevalence of uh, this pathology. We have also limited access for healthcare, especially in rural area, areas. And analyzing images is time consuming, costly, and prone to human error. The first studies uh, on uh, artificial intelligence have been made to elaborate appropriate algorithms for disease detection. And recent studies are given suggesting some treatment advices. All these studies were based on Fandus photography. Actually, a number of automated techniques are available for diabetic retinopathy diagnosis, but only one have the, of the FDA approval. It's the Food and Drug Administration approval. It's the ICE. Almost all of the studies have uh, developed algorithms with high area under high sensibility and high specificity. On top, artificial intelligence will uh, surely revolutionize our management of diabetic retinopathy in the future. Further studies are needed to elucidate the applicability and validity of these algorithms in the clinical practice. The second pathology is macular uh, degeneration. It's a chronic and irreversible macular disease. In the developed countries, this pathology is a leading cultural impairment and legal uh, blindness in aged patients. Its diagnosis is based on the examination of the fantus, ocity, looking for drusen, drusens. You can see here, here sm small yellow spots, pigmentary abnormalities, or macular hemorrhage. The sensibility and specificity of machine learning deep learning is automated assessment of this pathology is usually higher than 80%. And in the light of st uh, these studies, these automated applications have provided similar results with trained human graders, but till now there is no FDA approval. The third uh, disease is glaucoma. Uh, it's a silent disease. It's characterized by a progressive optic neuropathy that it uh, associates with characteristic visual file degeneration and high intraocular pressure. Early diagnosis and treatment can prevent blindness. The diagnosis of glaucoma is based on three parameters. The nerve head morphology, the visual file assessment, and the RNFL likeness OCT. Three parameters have been made algorithms of technopathy to detect preperimetric glaucoma and uh, to give strong prediction of the evolution of this disease. So now, now we are uh, far away from commercializations. We, we still have to look for the FDA approval, the CE marking, and uh, to do beta tests before commercializations. To conclude, uh, artificial intelligence is trustful for us. But now, an ethical dilemma and uh, artificial intelligence doctor plays him. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shema Khudris for the nice presentation. Uh, Professor Fizazi? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, the participants of your presentation. I think it's a point of view of a, 
medical uh, practice. So, uh, so I think uh, also this is a survey that uh, summarizes some idea, some idea and some concepts on the ophthalmology. This is an important point of view. My question uh, about uh, machine learning technique. Have you really uh, uh, understanding about this different kind of uh, machine learning technique that you can use to in this uh, in this uh, talk? Hello, do you hear me? Hello, Sir uh, Dohid, Doctor uh, Shema Rodriguez, on vous entend pas. Donc il y a un problème de connexion, on vous entend mal. Euh, Donc il y a un problème avec la connexion, je pense que. Ok, ça doit être si je n'ai pas de bonne connexion. C'est bon, docteur. Euh, oui, je vous entends. D'accord, c'est bien. C'est bon, vous entendez Oui, oui, je vous entends maintenant. Euh, merci. Donc, euh, je tiens à vous représenter, vous remercier pour la présentation. Je crois que c'est un point de vue d'un ophtalmologue, c'est très intéressant, ce point de vue qui est la connaissance qu'il a sur donc, le, la, les composantes de l'iris et ainsi de suite. Bon, ma question, c'était simplement sur euh, les différentes techniques. Donc, euh, qu'est-ce qu que vous, envage, vous envisagez d'utiliser euh, en tant que technique de machine learning et pour donc, les algorithmes, bien les méthodes que vous pouvez utiliser pour donc. Euh... Vous, vous entendez, non euh, Oui, oui, je vous entends. Bah, écoutez, je ne suis pas spécialiste dans le domaine. Euh, malheureusement, pour cela, je pose la question. Oui, alors, euh, en tout cas, nous, en tant qu'ophtalmologue, on a un travail, on mène un travail conjointement avec votre laboratoire. Donc, notre rôle, je pense que c'est de donner déjà une base de données. Donc, euh, une base de données marocaine donc, pour, pour qu'on puisse travailler dessus. Donc, un dataset, si je peux me permettre. Alors, euh, merci. Et, et ensuite, c'est de valider les, les différents algorithmes. Mais sinon, pour vous fournir plus de détails concernant la technique, je pense que je ne serai pas habilité à faire ça. C'est bon. Donc, je vous passe la parole, monsieur Abdel. Merci, professeur Fazazi. Merci, Dr. Shaima, d'avoir partagé avec nous. Donc, c'est l'avis d'une un, experte du domaine. Donc, là, la question, c'est la même, ça, ça rentre dans le même cadre que celle proposée par euh, Sifizesi, c'est que, quelle est l'étape suivante C'est-à-dire, voilà, vous avez effectué un état de l'art sur le, le, le domaine, voilà ce que les gens font utilisant donc les algorithmes de, de, de traitement d'image avec les algorithmes du apprentissage automatique. Donc pour votre cas, je sais bien que vous travaillez dans le, le CHU de FES, donc vous côtoyez donc quotidiennement donc des, des cas similaires. Donc quel est l'objectif, c'est-à-dire à court terme et à long terme de, de votre, c'est-à-dire la suite de ce travail que vous nous avez présenté ici? Bah, écoutez, euh, notre contexte, on n'a pas besoin de le décrire beaucoup plus. C'est vrai qu'on manque d'infrastructures hospitalières. Et je pense que si on peut arriver à établir des algorithmes donc, basés sur une base de données marocaine, donc, euh, notre objectif est de réaliser notre propre, notre propre logiciel. Donc, ça pourrait sauver la vue et la vie de plusieurs personnes. Donc, euh, nous vivons malheureusement dans... En fait, ça ne concerne pas euh, tout simplement que le Maroc, ça concerne même ouais. les pays les plus développés. C'est un problème dans, dans même la France, donc même les autres pays développés souffrent. Donc, c'est l'accès euh, aux soins, l'accès au dépistage. Et donc, euh, si on peut développer et commercialiser donc, euh, ces, ces applications-là, ça serait formidable afin de sauver la vie de plusieurs personnes. Et donc, notre objectif... À court terme, c'est de réunir déjà la, la, 
la base de données donc, et de travailler dessus. Et notre objectif à long terme, c'est de réaliser notre propre logiciel basé sur une base de données strictement marocaine, donc avec des, des particularités propres donc, euh, aux yeux marocains, et donc pouvoir l'élargir au, au, au fin fond du Maroc, si je peux dire. Merci. Donc, je donne la parole au professeur euh, Nfaoui Habib. Ah, ok, thank you, Sisbri. Uh, uh, so, I think that uh, the simplest uh, uh, way to uh, work about this project, uh, Dr. Sheima, is to make a collaboration between uh, us, between our uh, faculty and uh, yours. So, here we live in the same city, and uh, uh, you, as an expert in this domain, so you can uh, or you could give us. Uh, all the data set, your, your, uh, your, your, maybe your problems, your real problems. And here at uh, our uh, faculty or uh, inside our university, so you, can, so you could uh, make some collaboration between experts in artificial intelligence uh, domain and uh, particularly uh, uh, deep learning. So, uh, uh, I yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, collaboration uh, with uh -huh. uh, Professor Jamal and Professor Tairi okay. Hamid. Uh, donc, uh, we have uh, these collaborations uh, and uh, we are in the okay. first step uh, of okay. the collaboration. Okay, okay. so are, uh, you, are, yeah, you are under the good hand, I would say. So. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the Rifi Jamal and uh, Tairi. Uh, so and our, our uh, teammates, yeah, our colleagues, our friends, and our, uh, our uh, <laughs> brothers also. Thanks. So Thanks. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Professor uh, Nefawi. Uh, Professor uh, Jamal, Rifi, you have the questions, the remarks? I don't have any questions. Normally, I would just like to write on this point of collaboration between the CHU de Fez and our team. Bien sûr, guidé par notre cher professeur Sihamed Tahiri, Sihidnan, Sihiyawi. D'accord, donc nous sommes en train de monter un projet qui a été déjà soumis à Hawarizmi, d'accord, en collaboration avec les, le service d'ophtalmologie de Fès, avec Shayma, avec Dr. Shayma, avec Dr. Ben Atiyah. Et je crois normalement il a passé le, la première étape en espérant qu'il va bien sûr euh, gagner d'accord avec les euh, Donc, euh, on, a, on est en train de, bien sûr, on a deux, deux, deux aspects. Le premier aspect concerne la, le point de vue de l'expert ou bien des, des experts euh, ophtalmologistes, ça veut dire euh, Dr. Shaima, Dr. Ba'atia, ainsi que le staff d'ophtalmologie, euh, le service d'ophtalmologie. Donc, euh, qui servent pour la validation de notre modèle. Donc, on est en train de travailler sur un modèle de deep learning qui va nous permettre de, de travailler sur la spécificité marocaine qui concerne les yeux, euh, ou bien d'accord, afin de, de, de détecter ou bien de classifier la rétinopathie diabétique en passant par les quatre classes euh, connues. D'accord, donc on est en train de réaliser ce travail-là, donc on espère euh, qu'on va mener à bien ce projet-là. Voilà, merci bien. Merci, professeur euh, Jamal. C'est sûr que euh, l'application réelle, ça va donner quelque chose de très bien, quelque chose qui sera applicable par la suite. Euh, donc, s'il n'y a pas d'autres questions, donc... Euh, on va terminer cette session donc, euh, qui a été pleine d'échanges, pleine d'apprentissages. Donc, merci à vous tous et à très bientôt. Merci, Khali Merci bien. Merci, Jamal. Merci, merci, merci pour tout le monde. Merci pour tout le monde. Allez, salam alaikum. Merci pour tout le monde. Salut, Salut, 
انا استاذ اعرب استاذ اعرب ما بغاش استاذ استاذ شنو شنو استاذ اعرب فين؟ كاين كاين ما كاينش يمكن ما كاينش حدا كانوا خرجوا غير ما اللي با ديسبونيبل بور لي بور شكرا بزاف لدي خالد حفظك الله يعطيك الصحة يا الله عليكم السلام تحياتي سيس بريده ما يمكن حتى العشيه ياك العشيه كاين شي حاجه لا ثلاثه كاين دي سيسيون عاوتاني اون باراليل دونك ثلاثه صافي ثلاثه كاين ثلاثه سيسيون و دوما سي ا بارتي دو نافور يمكن وقيله يمكن نافور والله انا نقول لك دابا سور بلاص سور بلاص ها هو البروبليم اه هو هذا ثلاثه العشيه نافور ترونت ان شاء الله نافور ترونت صافي ان شاء الله حفظك الله سيدي انيس الله عليكم حياتي يلا الله عليكم السلام عليكم